Hello, everyone, and welcome to Clockwork Cantina, episode 54, The Boys. Yes. We, Hello, we everybody. out here, gang. We, we, out, we here. out here. Uh, the Boys season two, that's what we're going to be talking about today, because it's all out now, every episode, and everybody, I'm sure, has had enough time to watch it, if you're interested in that. Uh, so we're going to be talking about it. But uh, yeah, hello. Hope everyone's having a good, uh, you know, a good, a good week, a good weekend. Good, uh, yeah, good couple weeks. I love yeah. Them. So yeah, guys. Uh, also, if you may notice, the the facial hair is looking a little different. I decided to change things up because you know, I, I feel like every once in a while it's. Uh, it's nice to you know just to switch things up because why not? Hell yeah! Sorry, I was being interrupted there for a minute. Um, oh, good. Uh, because I still don't have a door on this fucking place. I swear to God. I'm I'm uh, I'm one of your hosts, by the way, Josh nine hundred two. Right names right yeah. right down there. <laughs> and I am uh, and I'm BP three, <laughs> which is also down there. Uh, uh, yeah, um, man. Yeah. It's it's been it's been two weeks since our last episode, but uh, if you're watching hey, on yeah. YouTube or the drive or you know the, the audio only version, the, you won't notice. But uh, but uh, you know if if you watch live, then obviously you will. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's fine. It, it's all good. Things happen, you know. It's good. It's good. Uh, what what ended up happening last last time was I ended up getting sick for like. Like four or five days, man, and I've st- it took me forever to get over it. You know, like just it just didn't feel good. I was sleeping a lot. Like Daniel can attest. I'm usually around the Discord a lot and hanging out. I wasn't around that much for that <laughs> when I was sick. I was I yeah. was miserable. It sucked. Um Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh and I don't even know what it really was, but I'm better now, doing better now. Um I, and feeling pretty good. Um. Uh, but yeah, the it was uh, fuck being sick sucked. Um, we didn't do D and D either, uh, like we wanted to. We've missed a couple weeks of that, unfortunately. Um, but things are looking up now. Um, so let's just move into what have we been up to, Daniel? What have you been up to this past? What have uh, I been up? Well, it's been it's been a hell heck of a two weeks, man. Uh, I have. I've been playing uh, some Phasmophobia here and there. Uh, I beat the story of Star Wars Squadrons on stream. Uh, And I've been playing a little bit here and there off, you know, offline as well. Like, you know, off stream or whatever. My own time. Uh, I've been, I I tried catching up on uh, Lovecraft, Lovecraft Country. Jesus, I can't talk. Uh, But I only got to watch like two episodes. So I got to catch up on the rest. I started Dragon's Dogma, the anime. I saw only the first two episodes. And the first episode, rem- like, I-, I told Josh this, but the very first episode of that anime reminded me of very, very similar. It's very similar. That first episode is very similar to the to the backstory of my D&D character in the game that we play, Frozen Decimation. Mm-hmm. Uh, my- Jedrick's the character his backstory i as i imagined it like forever ago like a couple years ago when we first started like coming up with the backstories and everything that first episode of dragon's dogma is like so similar it's fucking crazy it's not exactly or it's not exactly per, like perfect or, or like the, the the same but it is like similar as as you can get like it's like wow like i'm i was like surprised at how how like it was almost like seeing what I pictured in my head for this character, like in in animation. I was like, "What the fuck, dude? That's nuts." Uh, but anyway, that was that was bonkers to see. But I, but yeah, I started the anime. I saw the first two episodes. I have to finish it. But well, we'll you know, I'll, I'll I don't know. I I have to get to that. I've been watching a lot of movies lately, which leads me to the next thing. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of movies lately. Uh, yeah, like uh, I've because it's October. I've been watching like. There's been like almost daily movie night watches, so I've watched like Fright Night, the original, the 1985 one, uh, and then like I watched the new the new Netflix one, Hubie Halloween or whatever. 
How's that? Uh, I'm just curious about checking that out. I haven't seen that. It's all right. It's a goofy little, silly little thing, but it's it's like a feel good like type thing. And that's you know. cool. That's, you know, er- Ernest Scare- Scared Stupid was always one of my favorite Halloween ones, and that's not yeah. like super scary. I mean, it is scary, I guess, at points, but yeah. it's silly and goofy too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's 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 pretty cheesy, but I mean, I don't know. It's if you're into that kind of stuff, I would I would check it out. It's you know, it's an Adam Sandler movie, so yeah. you know. He's he's yeah. Uh, I watched the uh, the original Scream, uh, which was pretty great to rewatch that because that was a great movie. Uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, the nineteen ninety two one, with Keanu and uh, Gary Oldman and uh, and also Nona. Keanu's terrible accent. Oh Took my god, dude. Keanu is <laughs> absolutely atrocious in that movie. Bro. He is terrible he is in that movie. So, he is like by far. Listen, we love Keanu, but he is so yeah, bad in that. No. Yeah, he's he's terrible. Yeah, we're we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about Keanu here in a little bit. But like, man, he in this movie, he is so bad, dude. (laughs) It's it's he was miscast in my opinion. But uh, anyway, (laughs) and then uh, you know, and then Creepshow was another one that 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 we watched, dude. The nineteen eighty two Creepshow. Hadn't seen that in forever. Stuff, yeah, I hadn't seen that in such a long time. Um, and then. Fall Guys season two started, so you know, been playing some of that here and there almost every day since that started. Um, oh, I started and like beat the first 10 missions of Alien Isolation on stream as well. That game, dude, I like it, but fuck that game sometimes, man. <laughs> that shit does such a good job of making you paranoid. Like, normally, I'm the type of person to like run and gun in games, right? Like, give, give yeah. me a weapon. And like I will just fucking mow everything down, and I don't give a fuck who's in my way. This game, dude, I don't even run in this game. I don't even. <laughs> I, I I try to like fucking. Cr- I I like crouch walk in that game, dude, because that shit is <laughs> fucking terrifying sometimes, man. Uh it's like, and sometimes not even so much the fear of like the alien itself. Sometimes it's just like the atmosphere and like you, you're. I, I, it's tough to say a lot without spoiling things, but like you're in an area and it mm-hmm. makes a lot of noise and it's so unnecessary. And then like the music is fucking like intense and like suspenseful. And it, and it like makes it, it makes it like a bigger deal than it actually is. If that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's designed to like fucking, it's designed to fuck with you basically. So I'm liking the game 10 missions into it so far, but man, I, let me tell you, fuck that game sometimes with the shit it tries to pull off. Uh, but yeah, man, I, I know you have the game too. So I'll, I'll, if you ever play it, dude, it's, I, I'll be very, very interested to, to, to see you play that one, man, because it's, it's yeah. something. It's something. Yeah, it's, it's, it's on the list for some time to play it. Yeah, yeah I want to play it this month because I'm like, you know what? It's October. There's no better month to play it than now. So let's let's finally get to it. Fuck and yeah. then the last thing I have here is we are the champions, baby. 2020 oh, yeah. NBA Finals champions back again after 10 years. We're the champs yet again. Ah, uh, mm-hmm. man. If there was ever a year to win, it was this year for many reasons. But man, it feels good to be a champion again in sports. God damn. It's been 10 years since our last championship. Lake Show, baby. Well. But that's been my that's been basically my past two weeks, man. It's just yeah, it's it's been it's been it's been crazy. It's been a lot going on. Hell yeah. Uh let's see, what have I been doing? Uh well I was sick and I slept a lot. So I'm, I put that I put those in my notes. Uh uh Hades. So I bought Hades. Uh God, what day did I buy it on? Not that long ago. It was just like a few days ago. It might have been like right. Like in the middle of my sickness, I was like, I wanted to play Hades. I've been watching a lot of people play it. I've been in early access before and it came out. And I bought it. I bought it on my Switch uh, because it seems like a, a perfect Switch game. And uh, I'm addicted to this game now. Um, it's uh, It's got awesome music. Um, the, the art is gorgeous. Um, I don't feel bad when I when I fail and die. In fact, you're supposed to fail and die a lot. I have failed and died 39 times. Um, uh, and I've beaten the game 
or the game, beaten the final boss four times, which is you're supposed to go back and beat them multiple times. Um, and you're, I'm getting more and more of the story of it as a, as a, as each each run. Um, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy the shit out of it. I'm still playing it. I was playing it like an hour ago. Uh, I was like, I need to put this down because I gotta get ready for the podcast. I was like, but one more run. <laughs> <laughs> and so I did one more run and beat the beat the beat the end game uh, boss one more time. And it's just I don't know, man. It's something about it's grabbing me in a way that it's like I can just play it over and over and over and over. And like each run's different. The rooms are are random. The powers and boons I get are different. The weapons I use are different. It just it feels fresh every time I play it. I highly recommend it. You know me, I don't double dip in games. I might double dip in this and get it on the PC as well because it's going to have cross save coming for the Switch version. So my progress could carry over. And on top of that, it's cheap. It's 25 bucks. I've been playing the shit out of that. And if you're wondering, like, Josh, you're going a long way on this game. Huh. It's fucking good. I'm going to sing the praises of things I love. And I very much enjoy Hades. And if you haven't tried it, even if you're not like a roguelite person, I'm not. But these games usually don't appeal to me because I'm just like, oh, man, I'm failing over and over again. Unlock little bits, tiny progress. I recommend giving Hades a try because it's it's something about it, man. Just kind of grabbed me. Uh, moving on from Hades, uh, I played a little bit of the Baldur's Gate 3 early access. Not much because I started it and then like got sick and then like kind of fell off of it. And then I was like, well, I'm going to let him patch it a few times before I go go back. I messed around with a little bit of the of the warlock in there. And it was fun, but I think if I go back, I might start a different uh, uh, character class and, and try out something. Maybe the ranger. Uh, but but what I what little bit I played of it, it was pretty. Um, it ran well. Um, and yeah, uh, I can't say a whole lot on it, but I did play a little bit of it. Um, uh, the World of Warcraft pre-patch for Shadowlands dropped this past Tuesday. Um, as you know, they delayed Shadowlands, but the pre-patch is, is usually kind of helps set up for the expansion pack that's coming. Um, uh, so they did the level squish. People got squished down to level 50. Um, they've added a ton of new customization options, which is awesome. So I've been playing that. They made leveling uh, a whole lot of different, which we're going to talk about this probably a little bit later on when we get to the gaming news because I have some stuff about that. Uh, but I've been I leveled up a few more of my characters. Um, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, we've done some group games of Among Us here and there this uh, these past couple weeks. Uh, that we I don't know if I talked about that too much. Um, uh, but that's kind of fun with the, with the groups that we've been doing. Um, I've been taking part in the scary movies with Daniel and the others. I've missed some here and there. Uh, but for the most part, I've, I've stayed and seen the things I wanted to see. Um, Phasmophobia we've been playing a lot of, um, mm -hmm. uh, which is a lot of fun. I'm amazed at how fun Phasmophobia is for it's when you sit there and look at it and they're like, we've played how many hours of this? And it only cost this much. Oh, and it was made by like one dude. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> like we definitely got our money's worth out of that game. And I can't wait for more to come from it. It's just like it's crazy. That game is so much fun, dude. It's one of those things that, like, I wouldn't necessarily play it by myself because it'd get boring after a while. Mm -hmm. But, like, man, playing with friends, it's so much fun, dude. It is so yeah. much fun. I'm very glad that everybody decided to take part in that. I was trying to... I remember early on, I was like, please, somebody get Phasmophobia and play it with me. And I think it only took, like, one person... And for us to play it together, and then like, then we streamed it, and then no, Majin got it, and then he gifted you a copy, I think, right, or something like that. Yeah. Um, and the three of us played, and we streamed it, and people watched us play it, and then like fucking everybody bought the game. Which, which we're, which I want to do another stream of those. I want to do uh, another Phasmophobia stream before the month is over because I've only streamed it once. Yeah, so definitely. I, I want to do another one, man, because that's that game's fun. That game's fun for stream, especially. Yeah, it is. Um, oh, God, I accidentally closed it. Um, but yeah, uh, a big hit on Twitch, too. A lot of people playing that game. Uh -uh. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the past few weeks, I got some D&D art commissions done. Those are completed. I had two pieces done, um, which yeah. I didn't I didn't set up to show it on stream, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, maybe uh, check out uh, D&D tomorrow if you want to see that. I'll post it up before we start the game and let people watch. So or see rather um, those. Uh, I got offered a job. I got I got terminated and got uh, from Best Buy in for like a, a month ago, right? And I was like, I'm gonna put in a few job apps, and uh, I put in uh, at some places and did some uh, video interviews. Which, by the way, I don't know why it was so awkward to do a video interview. Like it's just a recording. Nobody's sitting there watching you. It felt so fucking awkward for me to do that. And I'm a sh I'm somebody that streams. Why is that so weird? It's so I think it's because I'm like trying to sell myself to this person <laughs> that I don't know who they are. I can't look them in the face, right? And I have no feedback. I think that's what yeah. it is. Uh, but I got offered a job. I, I go to orientation Wednesday, and I'm hoping uh, that doesn't mess with any of our scheduling that we do here for the show. If anything happens, I imagine it just might start later than what we're starting now but that, that might yeah. be the only thing i tried to fix the schedule when i signed up for places to sign up for, when i put in applications for places to no, work. when i signed up for things <laughs> uh yeah yeah no, no. I, if that happens yeah. if, if that happens and yeah we'll we'll just start the show later and that's it you'll be fine yeah and i was then, just trying uh, to get it where cuz i was trying to fix it for D&D too cuz you it doesn't matter yeah. where you work at they want you to have for fucking work weekends right so yeah um uh, so keep an eye on that. The schedules might kind of flux, uh, f f fluctuate around here till all that gets settled over the next couple weeks. Yeah. And I I ordered some stuff and uh, and some stuff came in. I don't know if you, if you guys can see it behind my right shoulder right there. My Black Series Nihilus came in, guys. He's oh, right there. Oh, the Tree of Worlds. Bam! Bam! Hey, hey yeah, look at him right there, Nihilus. He's a uh, he looks dope. I left him in the box for he now. Really does, he really does up. look badass, man. Uh, one of the most intimidating characters from a, a video game, in my opinion. Even like he never says like a word that you can understand nope. in the game, but like there's something about just that empty hunger of that character that is disturbing. Uh, um. I think I think also because we kind of see it through uh, this is Mars like point of view also like she's telling you about that character at points and makes it terrifying um, character from KOTOR 2 guys, by the way, just in case for for you youngins, I always assume like everybody's had to play KOTOR, right? Because in KOTOR 2, like surely you've played these games, right? Like, oh man, like. Not everybody's playing. I mean, um, people should, people should, but not everybody has. I'm looking at you, Katie. I'm looking at you, Katie. Yeah, Katie. Well, when we get you on the show again, Katie, we're gonna have a talk about this. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, uh, uh, some of the best Star Wars storytelling. Period, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, for me, for me, the original Kotor is like up there amongst. Some of the best Star Wars anything, dude. Like mm -hmm. movies, shows, games, whatever. It's top tier, dude. First Kotor is fucking so good. I think I was talking to Aaron the other day and I was like, man, I want a Black Series HK forty seven so bad. I do too, man. <laughs> man I want that. The HK forty seven is still my favorite droid. Uh like, out God. of anything. Like not so canon, good. non canon, whatever. He's still my favorite droid, dude. He's fucking he's the best, man. Man, we need to get Katie to play KOTOR and we just do a whole other show on it like we did before. <laughs> we'll just well, talk to her about done, it. We've done I know it. We've, we've done it. But yeah, I we've mean, done one, her. but we kind of talked about it when it was like rumored to be a uh, <laughs> like a movie. <laughs> New movie uh, yeah. Which I hope is still the case, but we haven't heard anything about that in a long time, so I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, we can definitely do one like off the game for sure. I, uh, yeah. It'd be interesting. It'd be interesting for somebody to be like somebody that's never played it to play it now, and then them tell us, say here and talk to us about it, and then us talk about them and our experiences I, with it. Many years. I ago. would love that if Katie, if, if we can get Katie to play it. Damn, that'd be amazing, dude. Yeah, yeah, we need to I'll, get her on that. <laughs> yeah, man, for real. She's, she's got to. I can't believe she hasn't played it, man. For big as a Star Wars fan, she is. She hasn't played Kotor. 
Oh, it hurts, man. It does hurt. Can't um, believe it. Can't believe it, Katie. Can't believe it. Uh, the last thing I had was uh, Amazon did Prime Day, but I bought this before Prime Day. They had a buy two, get one free, and I bought some more D&D books. Hey. Uh, I, I bought three. I've been one. So I bought the Explorer's Guide to Wild Mount. This is what uh, Critical Role's current season is on. This book is by Matthew Mercer. And those guys over there, and uh, Wizard, the uh, Wizards of the Coast guys. There's a lot of cool shit in this book. If you haven't seen it, check out the Heroic Cro- Chronicles. I believe it's called in here. I messed around with it just the other day, and it it's it's awesome for character creation. Like it is the dopest shit ever. And also, I'm just gonna show this really quick. That's a big ass ice worm that you guys might fight at some point. Uh, oh, hell no. oh, hell no. <laughs> uh, but yeah there's a lot of cool shit in this book highly recommend it it's the, it's the one I've went through the most so far uh, uh, and then I bought the uh, so it was buy two get one free and these were actually marked down by the way um, so I got all this for like 50 bucks um, Mythic's Odysseys of Theros I haven't looked in this book too much yet uh, but I know it's set in Greek uh, kind of mythology ish um. So yep, I'm gonna go through that one at some point, and then I bought this purely to use it for Frozen Decimation. This is the newest adventure book to come out from uh, the Wizards of the Coast guys, the Icewind Dale, Wind Rime Dale. of the Frost Maiden. Um, which if you know our D and D game, it's completely frozen, and this yep. every everything in this book is also completely frozen. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, and there's a, you know, I just love the art in these books, man. Like I, I, I would buy just books and books of art, uh, that was just D and D themed. Um, just have a library of D and D books. Oh my God, dude, I'm working on it. I was, I was tempted to buy more, uh, but I was like, I need to just not spend all my money on D and D books <laughs> until I'm sure I'm going to stick with this job. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, that's all I got, friendo. Uh, did anything else come up while I was chatting that uh, from across your mind that you want to talk about while we're just sitting here chilling? Oh, uh, no, not that I can think of. Uh, all right. I think we're good to go with the news. Let's hit the news then, friend. The news. All right. So if you can see our first bullet point there, mm-hmm. we have uh, the Ghost of Tsushima version 1.1 update trailer, which is available now. And by the way, Josh, we need to stream that. Yeah, we do. But uh, yeah, it's out now. So uh, oh, hold up. I'm on the I'm on the I'm not capturing the, the hang on. Technical difficulty oh. really quick and fixed. All right. Continue on, sir. So yeah, there it is. The 1.1 version trailer, which is out now. It came out, I believe, yesterday. Yes. Um, so yeah, you got the custom gear loadouts. You got the new game plus. You got the new horse. Uh, new merchant with new dice. So you can pretty much play the game again, all over again. You know what I mean? Because they added Hell new yeah. stuff to it. I want to. New charms and trophies. This is all for the single player stuff. And then then we have Ghost of Tsushima Legends, which is the four player co-op, two player story missions, four player co-op, unique classes, uh and gear and all that stuff. This is going to be fun, dude. I can't wait to play it, man. Yeah. We got to we definitely have to. I know it's out, like I said it's out now. I haven't tried it out yet though. I haven't uh, either. We definitely we definitely we definitely have to do it though. We're going to we we are because this was like this shit. Everything in this patch, everything in this fucking video, we talked about when we talked about Ghost of Tsushima. Go watch that episode. Yeah, you will you see. Watch our, yeah, if you guys watch our episode on Ghost of Tsushima, you will see that we we like literally talked about damn near everything in this fucking update. Mm-hmm. And shout out to Sucker Punch for listening and just you know put putting that stuff out there, man, because it's amazing. I did. I did read a couple articles. Just quick glances. Uh, people were saying that it was. Uh, it's good uh, what they've played. So uh, that it gives a, a lot of cool player player stuff. 
And that playing New game, game Plus makes you feel like a, a fucking demigod. So I'm like, I'm, I want to go. I want to go kill some more uh, fucking Mongols. <laughs> Same, dude. I, I, I can't wait, man. It's gonna be fun, dude. We definitely have to do that, though. Shit, yeah, brother. Hell, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. So after that, we have the Watch Dogs Legion story trailer. Let's get that which up. Is there at the top. Yeah, right there. Uh, Point. York? So this York? game is coming out pretty soon, isn't it? Uh, uh, the in the next month is it? Is it no this month? No, I think wait. it's this month, isn't it? Or... No, sorry, I'm getting Assassin's Creed and it fucked up in my brain. Um, because Assassin's Creed, I think is it, next it's month. this month. It's this month. Yes, 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 yes. Sorry, I'm pretty sure it's this month. I this, don't remember this the game exact comes date. out. Yeah, October 29th. So at the end of this month. So it's yes, very, yes, very yes, soon. Yes. Very, very, very soon. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, and again, I just the more I see about this game, the more fun it looks. Uh, I haven't actually watched this trailer. And in addition to this trailer. There's also something that Josh brought up to my attention, which is the census system. Yeah. And we will be talking about that after this trailer is done. But uh, yeah, man, I mean, this game looks fun, dude. I've, I keep saying that. I've been saying that for a long time. It's uh, I haven't played any of the other Watch Dogs games, but for whatever reason, this one just looks like more fun than those other two. Um, and I think part of that is because of the census system type type of thing, you know, where you can just recruit anybody. That obviously is like on its own, really fucking cool. But um, I don't know. I just just looking at the story trailer, it uh, you're gonna be able to pull off some really dope shit in this game. I think. And I'm looking forward to trying it out. So, yeah. Oh yeah, give me a spy car that shoots rockets. I'm in. <laughs> Fucking drones, man! Get them things out of here. Let's unfuck London, she says. All right. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, game, the game looks fun. Yeah, I, I don't. I. Cool. I. I probably won't be getting it right away, but um, there's, there's just so much out like right now, you know. So. Yeah. Uh, so it's gonna be tough, but I, I definitely do wanna do wanna get it. Definitely, definitely wanna get it. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so that was your first time watching the trailer, what did you think? Yes. I think um I don't know how the story's gonna be. I don't know if it's gonna be like the big thing that sells the game. I think what's gonna sell the game is the thing we're gonna talk about next. Um yeah. which is the census system. And 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 um I feel like who was it that said this? I think it was Rami Ishmael. If you if you don't follow Rami, he was he's a game developer um, uh, on Twitter, and I think it was him that said, you know, uh, that the graphics are only going to go so far at at certain points. But what really makes next gen next gen is all the systems, new new systems that next gen will let you put in things, things like the census system. Yeah. Um, uh, which we're going to talk about, I guess, now since we kind of have led into yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll, we'll we'll go into that now. Yeah. If you want to read so, about it, Daniel, or you want me to, or whoever wants to go. Either way, it's fine. We, we both got the link. Um, you go right ahead, bro. So it's an IGN. We're looking at IGN here. Uh, Watch Dogs Legion Census System feels next-gen all on its own. Um, so... It's it's kind of cool how. I, well, I don't know if I want to read this whole thing. Well, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but 
because there's a lot in there. So, but you guys should check it out. IGN.com slash articles. Watch Dog Legion Census System. Check I'll throw them a link out. in the chat for give you. Them, give, give them the uh, yeah yeah give them the give them the view and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's cool because they kind of talk about how like into detail some of this stuff can get. Like, for example, uh, they have a GIF here of like them getting hit hit by a car, and then like your car goes off to the sidewalk and it hits a pedestrian and yeah. she goes like tumbling and flying off to the side which uh, in this case they call they call her Vicky Vicky uh, and Icky, then, Vicky and then yeah <laughs> and like Vicky like kind of plays a part into kind of the story in some way you Let, know, let's with, see here's 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 what I read and kind of give you the 10 second pitch on it. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the person that wrote the article was like, yeah, I was playing like, um, watchdogs and they were playing just, uh, I think they weren't doing any story or anything like that. They were just kind of driving around and they ended up in a car chase and their car got run off the road and they hit a person named Vicky. Um, and after this was over, they, they felt bad. They were like, I'm going to go pay Vicky's hospital bill. Cause this is something you can do in the game. You can look up this person uh, that you've interacted with somehow. Um, Which is pretty fucking using, cool, man. Using the system to pay uh, her bill. And I think while they were actually paying the bill, or something of it was like... Uh, it's called... Here, oh, here's the tool. Um, feeling particularly awful about the situation, I used what Legion calls its deep profiler tool. An upgraded version of what Aiden Pierce and Marcus Holloway used to hack NPCs' text messages in the previous games. To find out what hospital Vicky had been sent to, I thought maybe I could help prioritize her treatment and make amends for the damage. Um, For the damage I did, and maybe give her a more favorable opinion of the band of hackers in the process. Uh, Here's what happens. Before I reach the hospital server, however, I'm accosted on the street by a random NPC... She screamed at me in the middle of a crowded sidewalk, passersby stopping to turn and stare, and a small icon popped up next to her in my hood, um, which had her name, and, and that she was the best, the best friend of Vicky. Um, uh, the, the article goes on to say, I awkwardly backed away before scrambling up a nearby drain pipe to get, uh, <laughs> to get my hackers on, bumping uh, Vicky to the front of the line in the hospital. Ignoring the deeply unsettling option to euthanize her, uh, which so you could totally kill Vicky in the hospital if you wanted to, apparently. Uh, and eventually uh, ended up recruiting both Vicky and her friend as the uh, dead sec operatives. Um, so I find that so interesting that you you weren't doing anything, right? You're just driving along. Hey, we're getting yeah. a, a fucking car chase happens all the time in GTA, right? Um I'm sorry. Uh, it happens all the time in GTA, right? And you you run off and you hit a pedestrian, and that's it, right? That pedestrian is probably fucking dead, and you get a, a star level, right? Fucking in Legion, you can go look that person up, pay their hospital bill, have them fucking killed. You get accosted by their friends. Like the whole system is. It, it goes even deeper than just that. Like everybody has connections to everybody like as you look them up like it, it's it's and you can recruit pretty much everybody anybody in the game right or just about close to it i'd imagine um so in a way it makes me think of the uh, shadows of mordor nemesis system uh which nobody would wants to take for some reason other than the shadow of mordor guys um to make the their bad guys um so let's see uh, if I can get the more of the details here on just the straight up system. Let's see. My story with Vicky and her friend was far from the only time I was drawn down the rabbit hole the deep prof- profiler offers. Every NPC I ran into seemed to have at least one or two branches on their social tree, be they family, friends, coworkers, or more. Some of them I find because I went looking, but others would just appear in my game organically. 
It is a feature that we call recasting, says Hudson, explaining how Legion's system, uh, census system will take the social tree of someone you've interacted with and give them walk-on parts in your future adventures. Maybe the friend of someone you flagged for recruitment becomes the victim of a mugging you can stop, or the brother of someone caught in your crossfire becomes an Albion guard in a mission some hour later, some hours later. That's one of the bummers about these events, he laughs, referring to the hands-on demo session. Only giving people three or four hours with the game because as you play through the game, you accumulate the impacts of your actions. You turn a corner and you're like, oh shit, that's so-and-so's lawyer. And it keeps track of all of that stuff. The system doesn't always work in your favor. At one point, I thought I'd found a cup to recruit. So I'd uh, have uh, uniformed access to New, the, to New Scotland Yard. But before I could get him on board, I ended up in a firefight with some gangsters. I won, but one of the goons happened to be the cop's informant. And he did not take kindly to me putting a few holes in his confidential informant. Detective Prasad hates DeadSec. My team screen re reads in bright red letters. He's seen the damage that DeadSec has often left behind, says the, prof uh, says the profiler. It's also said he'd recently been treated for rabies, so I might have dodged a bullet there. Uh, hating DeadSec means that the character can never be recruited to your team, but it doesn't necessarily mean that's the last you'll see of them. If an NPC hates DeadSec enough, they might feel compelled to seek revenge on the Hacker Collective. It's a mechanic that doesn't kick in until after the point our demo took place at, according to Hudson. But an example he offered was that a particularly vengeful NPC might kidnap one of your operatives, resulting in a unique revenge mission mission to rescue them before which, they're lost for good. Which, that sounds pretty fucking nuts, man. Like that. Yeah. That's like super reminiscent of the, like, uh, the nemesis system from the Shadow of War games, you know? Mm-hmm. Or the Shadow of Mordor, Shadow of War games. Uh, it's yeah, it, it's it's pretty cool. I, I I personally think stuff like that is pretty damn cool. Like I, I hope more games start doing more of this. Kind yes, of stuff. that's what I want. I, the systems is the future. Like you'll only get graphics up to a certain point, right? But what's gonna yeah. make things really interesting are the new systems that'll come in in games. Things yeah, like cool. the census system and more things, hopefully using the Nemesis system as well. So that that just sounds fucking cool to me, dude. Like you can have somebody recruited. Then you mm -hmm. do some stuff to piss them off, and they're like, you know what, fuck you, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn on you, and I'm gonna kidnap one of your agents, man. Good luck coming to get him. Mm -hmm. It's almost like I compare everything to D and D, but, but, but like some random NPC the party meets and goes on to become the big bad villain, right? Or <laughs> one of their good friends, like Alec, or anything in our D and D game, like. <sighs> Like, it's not, they weren't born to be the villain. You made them the villain by doing something. Kind of, your actions have consequences kind of deal. More so than in most video games where it's like, oh, there's thug number two with a ball bat. He's got no point in the story. But here, you could make an NPC that's got a name, got a family. You take them out, what could happen? What if one of their guys is coming after you now, you know? Kind of like, oh, that's really cool. I love it. Um, that's just says there's a point of no return when an NPC decides they capital hates you. It's all about reinforcing the realism of the simulation. Uh, it's pretty fucking goofy if you're like, you know, I shot your husband in the head, but if I take uh, care of your gambling debt, would you maybe reconsider joining us? He says with a laugh. We don't want to cheapen it by saying, well, yeah, under the hood, it's really just a bunch of numbers. We always want to focus on these feelings, like real people. We pushed this as far as we could on this generation. Uh, given that this tech is uh, for current hardware as well as the next gen, though there does have to be a balance between the people and that bunch of numbers, there are multiple stages uh, of the ways that we track things, says Hudson. If you just sit there and put the controller down and just watch somebody on their way to work and you have no interaction with them, you don't profile them, you don't interact with them, all you do is just watch them, then that person's not going to get the high priority. But if you have any sort of interaction with them at all, we uh, have a lot of little uh, heuristics under the hood that determine whether the game should remember or care about them. Mm. You'll start to see that stuff show up in surprising ways, even if you didn't save them to uh, save them to your team or try to recruit them. Uh, even with all these variables, though, the rabbit hole can only go so deep. Uh, there were a couple of times that I definitely asked more of the census than it was able to give, forcing a pair of siblings to interact in the Legion's dynamic cutscenes, for example. Didn't feature dialogue that indicated they, they were familiar with one another, as you'd expect, despite um, 
And despite the hating dead sick, that informant from earlier kept being scheduled for regular get togethers with a friend of theirs I'd recruited before. I knew you can't bring an NPC back from the, from the, uh, hate state. I asked uh, Hudson about it and his answer was pragmatic to be completely frank. Every simulation is eventually going to hit a boundary. And I wouldn't say we struggled with those boundaries. We acknowledged them and looked at them and said, we could try to solve this thing or we could make three new types of relationships on the main path that people are going to see more. Sometimes it's just a development decision. Hmm. So the, basically the system is only going to be able to go so deep, but fuck man, just the, even, even with just the little bits that they've said here fucking makes me excited. <laughs> yeah. Know? I mean, it, like, it sounds, it sounds great, dude. It really does. It sounds, uh, it sounds fantastic. Um, but that's about all I'm going to read out of this article. Um, yeah, there's a lot in there. Go, go read it yourself. If you want to check it out. Uh, those were just kind of like, I tried to pick out the bits that were mostly just about the census system. Uh, there's some other stuff in there. Um, uh, but yeah, I can't wait for the random little old lady. I accidentally shoot in the leg and, uh, end up recruiting like, uh, <laughs> uh, or her her uh, her 007 spy agent husband comes out of retirement to come after me like John Wick or some shit, you know, like <laughs> it's you know little little things like that. It seems yeah. really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you have anything else you'd like to add on that, Daniel? No, I mean I think we covered that pretty pretty well. Uh, it's just it's it's gonna be i'm gonna be very like this is gonna be one of those games where i'm gonna want to watch other people play it just to see like who they recruit and like who they make who they make as enemies and that kind of stuff you know what i mean it's very rooted in that XCOM kind of uh yeah dude for i that care reason about alone, my soldiers it's, it's gonna be fun oh yeah for sure dude yeah mm-hmm. it's gonna be fun watching people play this and it's gonna be fun playing it yourself and it's, just, it's gonna be a good time yeah and I, I wonder if like uh you know are they gonna have any like celebrity cameos kind of show up? You think some some hidden recruitable characters mm, like uh, Sam Sam Fisher might show up, right? In fucking <laughs> Watch Dogs. That would be interesting. Uh, or 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 anything like that. Like um, like an XCOM two, right? If you named um your the soldier after uh one of the one of the devs, um, like they would appear. Like they would take on their appearance uh, oh. for that for that dev. Uh, interesting. But yeah, I'm 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 uh, I went from I don't know if this is going to be good to really um, really kind of excited about it. Cool, man. All right, with that we can move on. Let's talk about Avengers here because. Uh, Crystal Dynamics claims that relief is in sight for all the board Avengers players. Uh, in a uh, in a in a statement here from studio head Scott Amos, uh, he talks about some new mission types coming to the game, the new outpost, uh, which will be as a new starting point for new story content eventually. Uh, the coming of Kate Bishop and Clint Barton, you know, the two Hawkeyes. Uh, and yeah, let's, let's. I'm gonna go ahead and read this statement here real quick, which is kind of lengthy, but lengthy. But we'll uh, we'll get to it as quickly as I can. Uh, and here it is, and I quote: "To our players, every day we fight to make the best game possible for our community. We have a great community management team at Crystal Dynamics and Square Enix who funnel all of your concerns, suggestions, and feedback to the development team daily. We are listening." We are making fixes, improvements, and additions as fast as we safely can to make Marvel's Avengers the game we all aspire to be. As such, we have a no- number of new content pieces coming in the weeks ahead, including a totally new Warzone mission called uh, Tachyon Rifts, a new outpost that's a jumping off point for new story missions in the future, and AIM's Cloning Lab, which requires a coordinated high level group of four players to beat with new top end loot rewards for finishing it. And in each of these updates, we do tuning and bug fixing to enhance the overall experience. In addition, we've announced two new heroes coming in the near future, K Bishop and Operation Taking Aim. And after that double feature operation starting Clint Barton, this is the two Hawkeyes we mentioned in the last war table. These new operations pick up right from where their main reassemble campaign ended in the core game and will propel the overall world story forward with new mysteries and villains, as well as new multiplayer content. 
Lastly, we will continue to add the new content to the game in the coming months as we address issues in overall game balance, including loot distribution and quality of life features everyone is climbing for to improve uh, our day-to-day experience from, from accessibility to co-op communication tools to balancing the economy. We are confident that we'll see PC players as well as those on Xbox One and PS4 return to the game as we add exciting new late game content and demonstrate that we continue to be focused on improving the game. We'll have more information and details about the very near content drops in the in the blog scheduled for next week. And we have new content communication initiatives coming soon to even more uh, directly share fun and useful information with you. Uh, thank you for coming with us on a journey and we truly realize uh, to truly realize what the best of Marvel's Avengers can become. Um, so that was the uh, the statement right there, and uh, I'm I'm it's it's good to hear this uh, because you know like I enjoyed the game when it first came out, but even but even then it had like all its bugs and all kinds of shit that it, it you know it was having problems with. Since then. They they have been doing some updates here and there, and they've all been they've all been good updates. Like they're like been like quality of life stuff, and you know like things that like I don't know if you remember, but like when you're in the heli carrier, you can't really like move that quickly. You kind of oh kinda, no, like, I trust me, I remember. <laughs> you you kind of jog or whatever. Now you can like full on sprint inside the fucking heli carrier. Thank uh, God. In, in the shop, when when you wanted to like uh, preview items, you couldn't, but now you can. Uh, just you know, there's like uh, there's like two lists of like full patch notes that I that you know from the two previous patches or whatever. I don't have them with me handy, but like they've added a lot of good, good, good uh, updates like that. And uh, yeah, man, I'm just I'm I'm looking forward to 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 when getting a, getting our our squad again together to play this because I mean I I d- I did enjoy the game. It was just there was just problems of like you know they would crash or there'd be bugs and glitches and things like that that would fuck up the game but overall i did have fun with it so i'm looking forward to the to the hawkeye stuff with both hawkeyes kate bishop and clem barton um the the only thing here is that they don't have any date dates for anything um my hope is that eventually at some point soon they'll come out with like a roadmap you know Mm -hmm. because that would be cool to see like just so we know what's coming and when and all that kind of stuff to look forward to things. But, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, at the very least, it's good to hear that obviously they're, you know, they're, you know, constantly updating the, the game and, and, you know, working towards making it the best game it can be. So that's kind of where I am with it. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, uh, <clears throat> always meant to play more. But just didn't, and there was just too much other stuff going on, and it was like, I don't know, I lost interest pretty quick, you know, with all the bugs and things that were happening. Um, which is what I was afraid of originally with it. Um, what's really going to make it or break it for me really is is the things they're doing now, which they do. They are supporting it. They had a lot of a lot of bug fixes come out, a lot of patches come out. Um, they really uh, have been supporting more. it pretty well lately, yeah. And more content is coming, and that's that's what I wanted to see. That's good to see. So, and that was kind of like my big thing before, where it was like, I don't know if I wanted to get it, um, and when wasn't planning on getting it. The only reason I ended up playing this game is because Jake bought it for and gave gifted it to me. Uh, um, uh, and I feel bad sometimes that I didn't play it more than I did <laughs> with, him, with him. Um. Uh, but I am, I'll get more active in it, uh, as they get more, uh, patches and, and more content kind of flowing and, you know, it's one of those things I know, I know, uh, Majin was also kind of hampered by some crashes and things that were happening with him. Yeah. Uh, that if I get, I think since have since been fixed with the patches. So there, yeah, um, there, there, I have been, I don't think I've crashed since some of the more recent, uh, updates although i haven't really played it a whole lot like i've i've been like logging in like here and there just to see like what's new in the shop or whatever like if there's new cosmetics and things but Mm -hmm. i haven't actually like played it for like an extended amount of time for a hot minute i just it's one of those games where like it's fun to play with other people you know yeah and part of me i i don't think that uh, the launch was a disaster or anything but i do think if they delayed even just a month to squash more of the bugs 
Uh, it might have been a little bit better in the long run of things, but it is what it is. Uh, they definitely care about the game because they're putting in a shitload of work and patches on it. So yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I look forward to uh, me visiting it. Yes, 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 yes. Moving on from that, let's watch uh, a man tear down a PS5 and then uh, look at the new PS5 UI. So, uh, but first, let's, let's check out this. Uh, if you click on the link there, Josh, yeah, I inside it. the first one, there'll be a video. But just click on that. So uh, this man opens up a PS5 because that's what everybody wants to see, right? Whenever there's a new system. People always want to see what it looks like on the inside. Um, and uh, yeah, this man is called uh, Yasuhiro Utori. And uh, he's going to open up a PlayStation 5 for us so we can see what the, what the, what the guts and what the inside looks like. Uh, there's a USB Type A and Type C ports. Um, I do have this video that you guys are watching. I have it sped up. So if you see him mm-hmm. moving around kind of quick, uh, it's a pretty long, about seven it minutes. Yeah, well, I mean, we don't have to watch the whole thing, but you know, no, you no, just, no, no, no. Just, just but, skip uh, through it, and uh, you know, we'll see. Uh, you know what it looks like. I, I still, I still want a a different colored PS5, man. Like, 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 like. Don't get me wrong. White is white is different. Like usually, PS Playstations are like all black or whatever, mm-hmm. and they're doing something different with the PS5. But I just, I don't know, man. I just. I, I, something about the color scheme just seems off. Yeah. Um, well, the ease, I, I, I watched uh, some other guys watch this um, video and they talked about it. I think it was the drop frame crew um, that were like, hey, those were pretty easy to take off. They're obviously going to have um, other covers come along and, and you'll be able to swap them probably pretty easily. Um, mm-hmm. If you don't like the white, I'd imagine. Uh, yeah, because they didn't. They, it didn't look very hard to take off at all. So, uh, uh, yeah, that is a big ass cooling fan, though. Yeah, that thing is huge. Yeah. Um, yeah, you just kind of skip through it. It shows you all the parts and uh, you know, the heat sink and the you know, liquid Blu-ray metal or whatever. Uh. I think the liquid metal thing, from what I was reading and understanding, I never really, I'm not really good at like breakdowns of things. I just, I just kind of, I just kind of play the PlayStation, right? But mm, apparently, yeah. liquid metal is like a thing that before was kind of super corrosive, uh, as a as as a as a cooling thing, a majig. Um, but apparently, they've managed to get it into a way where it's not here, and I. I, I'm not exactly sure, but apparently these run really quiet as well. Um, from I mean, what yeah. I understand, yeah, that that I mean that's so. that's good because I mean there would be there would be times where like I had a PS4 or a PS3 that like they sound like a fucking jet, sounding like a damn jet engine, bro. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on over here, man? Like, like what are you even doing? Like you're just sitting there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah. Uh, my nephew's so, got yeah, man. like that. Yeah, it's like, why is this thing so loud? Like, literally, all it's doing is sitting there. Like, I'm not even like, like what? Yeah, look at the size or, uh, of that heat sink, by the way. That thing's yeah, fucking yeah. huge. Yeah, that thing is <laughs> that thing is massive. Uh, <laughs> another good reason why this uh, runs at a good temperature, I imagine, is that fucking big ass heat that sink. That thing is huge, man. Oh man, <laughs> could you imagine having to take one of these apart? I uh, I would be I'd be like I uh, I'm gonna need like five or six takes on this guys I'm gonna it's gonna be t- you think he did this all in one sitting like I mean <laughs> you know <laughs> I'm sure this guy like practiced this off camera you know like he he had time to be like all right let me let me let me do this I'll be like listen listen I'll do this and I'll I'll practice it a bunch but I get to keep the PlayStation when we're done right like I, I uh... <laughs> I'm sure this guy can have you know one if you wanted to. You know? <laughs> But yeah, um, then you, but then you see all the parts, you know, spread out there at the end, and it's like, man, look, look at all that. All that is inside of your fucking PS5. It's nuts. Yeah. 
I mean, shit. It's pretty cool. Uh, I don't have a lot to say on it because I just I'm not a very techy, techy minded well, person. How about this? We'll move. Let's move on to the UI. All right, hit me. There's, there's another video right there. Is it's it not the in same that, article? No, it's not in the same article. It's it's the next link. All right. Well, if you look at the little, data. it's on that same bullet point. But if you look, it's the PS5 user experience. That one. Gotcha. So they they showed off the UI here. I have not seen this yet. I haven't seen what it looked like. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I'll be curious to see what you think. Because I, I did watch this the day it came out, which was actually only a couple days ago. It wasn't that, that long ago. This is more This is more recent news. Um, a lot of people are comparing this to, like, the Xbox UI or whatever. But uh, we'll, we'll see what you have to say after after watching this. Right. I think I think it looks neat personally, but it's gonna take some time to get used to because I mean I'm so used to the PS4 stuff. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's like it's, it's but that's, like but that that's just anything. how it is every at the beginning yeah. of every generation, you know. Like the like from PS3 to PS4, or PS2 to PS3, it's all the same shit, you know. It's just mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a new system. It's gonna take a little bit to get used to the UI, so whatever. But I think it looks pretty neat. And then like I think it'll only look better once they let you add like themes and stuff, you know. So. Yeah, I just I, um I, I think it'll be pretty pretty dope. But yeah, there's the uh the thing. And then like if you listen to it with audio, like I would recommend listening to this with audio after stream or whatever, Josh, because they do there is like a narrator talking about like Yeah some of the I have, features I have it I have stuff. it on, but I can't really pay attention to it because we're doing this show. Uh, but yeah, it does. Looking at the Xbox stuff, it does make me think of, um, uh, or sorry, looking at the PlayStation stuff does make me think of the Xbox UI. Yeah. Um, that because I had to set up my nephew's Xbox because he wanted the Xbox a while back and got one. So um, I definitely see the comparison a little bit, but I mean, it's just a UI. <laughs> yeah. So he kind of goes into some of the things that you can do while you're playing a game and and whatnot. Like there's there's a little pop up thing that you can have that will give you like tips and whatnot on how to like beat some parts of the game or whatever. And uh, uh, it's just things like things like that. And then there's another. If you skip it up a little bit, there's a part where they show you like a video on on how to. How to how to get through it or whatever, um, and then and then if you keep skipping up ahead a little bit more, there's they have like voice chat and like uh, they kind of have like game share type thing where you can like watch a friend of yours play a game while you're playing your game. Oh, that's cool. So like if you if you go to like the six thirteen mark, the buffering won't stop. Like. This their friend. This this person's friend is playing Uncharted while this person is playing Sackboy or whatever. And then you can just watch like somebody play their game while you're playing your game, and you can, and then you can just move it off to the corner to the sides or whatever. This video is wanting to. There we go. There we go. That's cool. It's kind of like what we do in Discord. Yeah, basically. Uh, it's funny yeah, that we're yeah. in a in an age where we're like, yeah, we're playing games, but I also want to watch my buddy play his game. And I want to play a game him. while watching my bro play a game. Play it's so game. weird too because all I wanted growing up was like my parents to watch me play my fucking game and be like <laughs> share this sharing this story with me. It only took us several many years to get to this point but now it's like the norm the it's, yeah, it's normal good. like i i hop in discord i'm playing wow i immediately start uh, streaming it uh on the discord even if, even if i'm not streaming on twitch just because i want people to know hey i'm doing something you want to hang out and look at this if i say hey look that's cool check this out you know it's shout really cool to, shout out to star chicken yeah the boy star chicken I've shown off um, the WoW uh, pre-patch customization options <laughs> to the to the guys and the ladies as well on the Discord uh, that were hanging out with us. So 
Destruction All Stars. Yeah, so oh basically boy. this part they show you like how to take screenshots and whatever. You just you fucking just Phenom, ahead. man. What the hell? You can skip ahead of that. Um, <laughs> Phenom's here for his game, yeah. Uh, if you go uh, here we go. to like the uh, yeah, there it is, screenshots and whatnot. So if you go to like the nine forty five or nine or nine forty mark. They kind of mentioned how the PlayStation Store is going to change and how it's integrated into the system instead of being a standalone app. Oh, sweet. And, uh, you know, obviously stuff will load quicker because of the SSD and whatnot. And If you don't have an SSD now, what are you, what are you, what are you doing? Seriously, man. man it'll, change, it'll change your life. All right? Yeah, so... Let's see. I'm trying to see if there's anything else useful in here. So you, you so you, you can send screenshots, whatever. That's pretty much it. I mean, that's basically it. It's just a small little look into the the UI. Uh, um, I think it looks fine. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it it does what it's meant to do, and that's kind of all I got to say on it. I guess I couldn't do any better. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Who am I to judge this UI? I don't know shit about them. I just know they got to get me where I'm going. No. Um, now, if it was Alrighty. terrible, you'd, you'd hear me say it, but <laughs> it's, it's just not terrible. All righty, let's move on from that then. Let's talk about <laughs> Universal Studios Japan's uh, Super Nintendo World opening up next spring. Uh, but hey, man, do you want some Mario themed yeah. pancake sandwiches? Sure. Those will be coming as well. If you click on the second link. This one. That one, yes. That one right there. Oh my god, they have a photo. Yeah. Who's Cap? Okie dokie. Look at that. They're Mario themed pancake sandwiches. I don't know if Josh can show them on stream or not, but yeah, hang on. Listen, listen, guys. There's uh there's gonna be the the uh what is this place called? The world's first Mario Cafe and store. October sixteenth. Let's see what else they have. Like they have like images and stuff of what like the shops and the merch and all that shit's gonna look like. So yeah, there there are your uh, those things that Josh is showing right now. Those are the uh, the Mario themed pancake sandwiches that are coming. I feel to like Japan. we had this talk the other day. Uh, I remember when green ketchup was a thing, and I wouldn't eat it. And I'm not eating Luigi's hat neither. Okay, that's not gonna happen. All right, like Mario's looks, Mario's looks fine. It's red. It's fine. It's fine. I ain't eating Luigi's hat. Look, it's funky, man. It's green. It's got mold on it. Like what? It's in his head all the time. It's sweaty. It looks nasty. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I'm joking. Obviously, it looks fine. But I, I do have this weird thing where I don't like eating green stuff unless it's like the salad. Uh, let's look at some of these other photos. You said there's yeah. other photos. Oh, they have, yeah, they have like merch and like storefronts and whatnot. And they got like the pharmacy thing where they got like desserts, soda, sweets, coffee, whatever the hell else they sell in there. That's Next cool. to that, they got the, the dark room camera photography, you know, photography stuff. Um, below that, there's like a, oh, I guess it's like what it'll look like on the inside, I suppose. Oh my lord! Yeah, there's your, uh, there's, there's your inside right there. Order your food and whatnot, and <laughs> that looks so trippy. And I sit on your, this, by the sit way. on your mushroom <laughs> chairs. Oh my goodness! Um, so we're 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 planning our Japan trip for when this opens, right? And we're going like, that's hey, funny. dude, if I could, I would, man. That, that'd be that'd be cool, dude. Going to Super Nintendo World, that'd be badass, man. Um, fucking then, Danky Kang show up and run off with me and be like, your buddy's in another castle. Danky Kang. <laughs> fucking your, your, your boy Danky Kang getting them, <laughs> getting them rings, man, and running fast. Uh, then below that, they kind of have like a, uh, I don't know, this is like a, like a merch shop or, you know, like, like they better be selling or- Mario's mustache. They better oh, be in I'm there. Sure, I'm sure they will be. They I got, better like, be allowed to buy that thing. I'm sure there'll be like t-shirts and mugs and whatever the fuck else in this little shop right here. All I want for the mustache. Um, 
if you scroll down, there's like a toad head with like some candy or a drink or something. And then they got, oh, like, that's a cup. Okay, I've seen those. Yeah, then they got like the Mario Luigi cups with the mustaches and shit. Oh you know? my god, they got the mustaches. That's so weird. <laughs> so when you like drink from it, you have like the mustache, you know what I mean? Be- oh, Japan, never stop being <laughs> great. A. I love it. Uh, and then they got, and then of course they got like merch and stuff, like you know, uh, I don't know why you would want that or need that, but if you want it, if you need it, there it is. <laughs> Little like a pillow or some shit, and then you know other other stuff. But yeah, man, su- Super Nintendo World in Japan next year. Uh, well, that's a thing. In the, uh, yeah. Or sometime will sometime be. Ne- next spring, it'll be a thing, all right. Moving on, we have a bunch of cyberpunk news because uh, they dropped I mean, another Night ton. City, Nightwire City, Night whatever it's called. They dropped like the fourth one of those. Night City Wire. Yeah, but I split them up into little tight, smaller videos so we can just watch those. All right, which and one then be- first? But before that, let's talk about the new Cyberpunk Red, the tabletop RPG prequel. Yes. Which is out next month. Yes. So, uh, Cyberpunk Red. Tabletop RPG and prequel to Cyberpunk 2077 is out in November. The boxed starter set went on sale in 2019. Yep, you could already get like a little... It just had the... I don't know how many of you have ever gotten like just the little beginner sets. It literally just has like really quick quick start rules, has like no character creation or anything like that, and you just kind of fiddle with it. Um, the, yeah. when you get the big boxes later, they come with all the the big rules and all that. Sorry. No, I was just gonna say the uh, the core rule book uh, will go live as a thirty dollar downloadable PDF around November fourteenth. Uh, physical books should hit the store shelves around November nineteenth at sixty bucks. Uh, the announcement was made Friday on the publisher's website. I say Friday, but this is like from like two weeks ago, um, October ninth. Uh, around then, uh, but yeah, I figured we talk about this because you know we, we we talk about g- gaming and 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 tabletop is a part of gaming, so yeah, man. And we play it here on the channel sometimes. Yeah, or on the yeah channel. And some some of our episodes are about the ta- you know D and D and stuff too. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so we're definitely gonna talk about. That. I know Josh, and then of course, if you, as you all know, Josh is super into. Uh, D and D, I mean, or in RPGs and tabletop and whatnot. I mean, fuck, I love if you, at, uh, if you look at Josh's new redesign. I mean, that's basically you know. Yeah, I love um, not just D and D. I always say D and D because that's what I started with. But uh, when I say I love D and D, what I really mean to say is I love just fucking tabletop RPGs, like in general. Like, it, it, like I love all the different systems from fucking the fantasy flight systems with narrative dice to. The City of Mist system, so all these other systems, uh, and I like to pick and choose from what I like and make my own system. You know, um, uh, so I will probably talk. I'll probably get this. We will probably talk about this. This might get played on the channel if it's good enough. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm definitely, I, I'm definitely interested in it, uh, especially with Cyberpunk coming out. Maybe we'll grab a copy of the book and do a one shot or something. You know, that'd be cool. Uh, but yeah. Oh yeah. Anything else on here? Oh, what do we got? Uh, let's let's uh go ahead and talk about the videos. So we have uh of the game now. So we have gotcha. Writers of the Dark feature. I actually haven't seen these yet. I watched these. Um that night that they'd come on so i will be watching these for the first time so uh i could have just watched the whole thing but i'm like i don't know it just it just feels easier to i watched co react to it because i really like watching him react to it because he's in the fucking game so it's like i can't help myself i'm like i got to watch this. i just feel like it's easier to watch these individually instead of the whole thing or maybe oh, it's yeah. not i was just it's just they're just Shorter videos that you can watch and get done, and like in the in the in the wire, they 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 throw in little jokes and stuff in between. That's yeah. kind of um, but yeah, um, chill ride. 
There's a Man, some of, I don't some of these know cars look that. badass. There's a there's a lot more vehicles and I don't know why. Because I knew there's gonna be like kind of a little bit of a focus on vehicles in the game, but I was like they haven't really talked about it all that much. And and then when they sh- when then I saw this video and I was like, there's a lot of fucking vehicles in this. Fucking- see, see, this just makes me wish the game was in third person, though, man. Like, God, I I prefer third person so much more than first. I just wish the whole game was like that instead of just being in a vehicle, you know. Uh, I think you could. Is it not third person when you drive sometimes? Yeah, that's what I mean, though. Like it's only third person when oh, you're like. Oh, you m- okay? I see. I see what you mean. Okay. I Sorry. wish I like, that the whole backwards. game was third person. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just I looks feel so you. dope, man. I don't really have a preference. I don't think. Um. But yeah, a lot of these vehicles look really fucking cool, man. Sorry, I get I get kind of sucked in looking at the vehicles. They look great. Uh, they look so cool, man. Uh, I'm very curious, like how much you can customize or whatever. Uh, maybe they'll talk about it here, but again, I haven't seen this, so. Um, yeah, so they they uh, they they all have like different classes, right? Like these 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 are like the big boy trucks that they're showing yeah, right they, now, at least on yeah, my heavy end. heavy duty, yeah. And then you got like the sporty, quick, gotta go fast vehicles. Um. Oh, I guess you wouldn't see. They show Keanu, like actually Keanu, in the Night City live wire. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Did you, did you? Is the video on the list where they're talking about recording sounds and audios for the vehicles? Uh, maybe I don't. Probably there's wait, wait, there's two behind the scenes videos that I've okay. included. Okay, then you might so maybe I, might maybe see maybe it'll be one of those. I don't know. We'll we'll see. All right. Um. Uh, you guys aren't getting the full experience because I'm, I'm not playing this video with sound because we don't want to risk getting. Anyway, you guys should watch it on it. your own because it's yeah, pretty dope. Well, what I was going to say is the vehicles sound great. <laughs> like there's a lot of rooms and and stuff. Um, I'm not a big car guy, but it is it is it is definitely cool. And it's it's almost here, man. Like almost a month. Be one month. In like two days. Oh. Sweet. So That's cool. Is... I like that. So the next one is behind the scenes, revving up Night City. Ah uh, yeah, this is probably the one. Which, yeah, this is probably it right here. There They're showing off a bunch of cars, yep. Yeah. yeah, this this is this is probably it right here. Yeah, this is it. Um because in this in this video they're t- they're talking really mostly about audio and getting uh, vehicles getting really good sounds for them and then sound right, yeah. Yeah, and uh, hiding, uh, not hiding, but put where they put the microphones and things at, and they're and they're like they're, they're riding around with like a professional, like racer driver, <laughs> and just could you imagine being in the car with this dude and he's just fucking hauling ass? He's, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's he, dude, he's having the time of his life. Look at this guy, man. I would be he's, terrified. He's making like faces and shit. It's great, man. Look, if I ride with my, like if I get in the car with my mom somewhere, I'm already my anxiety's at like a nine. I couldn't imagine being with somebody I don't know. It's just ass. It's like, all right. Kind <laughs> knows what uh, he's doing. Uh, uh, but yeah, I did. I've never really thought about um how how the hell do they get sound from cars? I guess I never really thought. Oh, I guess they just go and record some cars. <laughs> put it in the game which is I guess what they do because they did it here um, um, yeah they mic them up in places I don't understand how they could um, 
Because I'm not big in the audio stuff. I'm like, how do they record this and not like blow out the fucking mics, right? Like, <laughs> how do you get like a good sound? Because these these cards are fucking loud. They just like, put mics everywhere, man. Look at that shit. Yeah, it's crazy. You got the popos, you got the sporty cars, you got to, you got everybody out here. There they go. Big fancy cars. They're only showing you the nice ones. They're not showing you where they went out in the sticks and got these really shitty cars and hooked them up because they had to get the shitty cars out. <laughs> That's great. <clears throat> oh, God. Man, let's get let's get these cars, man. Let's get these future cars. I'm in. They look pretty sick, man. Fucking open and shut the door. Have a steering wheel that looks like a fucking flight controller. That one car looks like the Batmobile. <laughs> uh, the Rayfield one. I don't remember which one it was. Yeah, I think it's the Rayfield one. It, it looks pretty sick. Yeah. yeah, I do like the look of that one. Uh, they're talking about, uh, I think, they're talking about how they put Johnny Silverhand's Porsche in the in the game, and it's going to be like a hundred year old car that's in the game. Forty vehicles. <laughs> Part of me wants there to be a DeLorean somewhere hidden in the city. It's just, just a fucking Easter egg or a cameo yeah, or, or yeah. something. Yeah, that's good. there's got to be one hidden somewhere. I, they'd be nuts not to have it in there. That's cool. I, I like seeing stuff like that, you know, behind the scenes. Yeah. And just showing you how, you know. Well, it's, it's something I never thought about. Like, how do they record sounds for vehicles, you know? Like, I've never, I never thought about that. Yeah. So next up, we have the behind the scenes with uh, Arch Motorcycle with Keanu and Guard Hollinger. Yeah. So uh, I heard that they added like Keanu's actual like bike in this game. So. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah. And I think they have a cyberpunk. It's theme like a partnership. Movie motorcycle too that's been made in real life that I believe Co bought one of <laughs> the really? day yeah. after this. I want to say if I'm not mistaken, I could be way off Damn. and like just misunderstood somewhere, but but yeah there's your boy Keanu just kicking it. Arch Motorcycle, yeah, these are they're the co-founders. There you go. Yep. Just go to Keanu and be like, "Listen, we want to put you in the game, and also we want to help market a motorcycle with you." <laughs> and Keanu's just like, "Fuck yeah, brother, let's do it!" <laughs> like, just the chillest dude ever. <laughs> Uh. Look at that specialized, uh, it looks cyberpunk dope. motorcycle. Yes. 
Yeah, this is pretty cool. Yeah. I, uh... It's, that's, it's, it's just cool, like, seeing, like, how they took the design from one of the things that they actually did to make the, like, cyberpunk version of the vehicle, you know? It's, it's, yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> the source will be pure. Fucking yeah, Keanu. Yeah, Keanu kills me. He's so funny. That's great, man. <laughs> oh god. These guys, man. Yeah. What are you gonna do, Daniel? Are you gonna rock the bike or are you gonna rock the car? I I mean like I'm sure they'll let you like have options, so I mean I'll probably do both, but like the bike seems pretty cool, man. I I, I like rocking bikes in games. Yeah. I usually wreck them and get killed immediately. Yeah, sometimes you gotta be careful because yeah, you'll like bump into something and fly off into your death, you know. But uh, God, I used to play GTA. Just I I hit yep. shit on purpose just to see how far I could fly. Jesus. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's all the cyberpunk stuff. No, we got two more. No, I mean uh, that, that's that's most of what I saw. Rather, there's a. Uh, um, 20- 2077 in style, which is which. Uh, check that. Oh out. yeah, yeah, yeah. The di- the diner. I remember that. The diner, and then the I didn't see the diner one. Yeah, there's yeah, yeah, that yeah. one, and then there's this other one. So yeah, there, there was quite a bit that they showed off the other day. Yeah. So like Sorry. I said, this one is uh, 2077 in style, and uh, again, I haven't seen any of these, so I assume this is just like. This is kind of talking about clothing. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, if I'm not mistaken. Which this will be interesting. Styles. Oh, damn. Look at that. Jesus Christ. Did you see that magazine? Uh, did you see the name of it? It said Milfgard. Oh. Like Milfgard from Witcher. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, damn. She murdered that fool. Yeah, that dude got fucked up. Four visual styles. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, Lord. Yes. Yes. Looks are what matters. <laughs> I play a lot of WoW, and it's really just fashion simulator, right, pretty much. Oh, shit. This this song is great. This song is this song is good. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good song. You guys should watch this with sound. Yeah, watch, cool. watch watch your sound. It will fucking jam out. Man, this the is just, this is just nutty, man. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. I know, like a lot of people that dress like that. <laughs> uh, Neo militarism, damn. Uh, boom, 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 boom. This song's so great. I know we're talking about styles, but the music's what's got me going. Hey, man, music can be a part of this, your style, too. Yeah. Oh, that guy. Ah, so this is a celebrity uh, style right here. Mm-hmm. Shiny. Real shiny. Yep. (laughs) 
What's your uh, what's your style, Daniel? I mean, ah, uh, dude. I I think I'm gonna go with like oh, fuck. I don't know. I'd have to. <laughs> I'd, I'd have to see, man. Because there's like, like the the mil the knee like the last two probably are not gonna be for me. But like, I don't know, man. I, I just I I don't know. I, I'll have to I have to see more. Like this. This I thought this would help me decide what kind of stuff I'd go for, but not really, it, dude. A thousand percent didn't. Did. <laughs> no, it's not like it's not not like the one where it's like you know you can choose your career like your life path or whatever the fuck. Mm -hmm. That one I'm like, all right, I know exactly which one I'm going for. The gangs one I'm like, I know exactly which gang I want to help out. This one I'm like, I don't know, dude. I gotta see. But anyway, yeah. there's one there's one more final. There's a one last cyberpunk video. It's called the diner. It's a really short one, 38 seconds. Let's see what this is all about. Yep. Dude, the house looks sick. Yeah. This is kind of like, I think talking augments, it seemed like, kind of. Yeah. Because he's talking about upgrades and shit. Yeah. Okay. I'll be honest with you. I don't. That was really. It's it, it's a little strange. That one is because it's like we're here for forty seconds and <laughs> it's, like, it's just eh. like eh. I assume it's just a character we're gonna meet in a diner. That's yeah, kind of what it seemed like. Um, yeah, I guess. All right. Well, that's that's uh, it that's for uh, Cyberpunk. That's it for Cyberpunk. Yeah. There's a lot to go through, but yeah, we can move on, which I believe we have WoW next. Yeah, uh, just some quick, um, some wow, a couple of quick things. Uh, I'm gonna throw up the so the WoW Shadowlands pre patch dropped. I talked about it a little bit in the thing because I've been playing it. Um, they have the survival guide here for um, where they kind of go into the uh, the uh, features that kind of dropped with the pre patch. Um, talking about the uh, uh, pre-expansion events that they that they have, like the ghouls and and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, or, sorry, the undead invasion thing that's going to happen. I already know about because we have data mining and stuff and beta testing. <laughs> um, the biggest thing that happened is mm -hmm. um, the level squish. If you're 120, you get squished all the way down to level 50 now, man. Uh, which this has uh, been needing to kind of happen for a while. Uh, because the numbers are just going to keep climbing. Because uh, Blizzard's never going to let WoW die. Ever. It's never going to die. They're just, they're just going to keep squishing you back. <laughs> um, so they've tuned everything in the game just to scale it all down. So nothing really super changed. If you were able to do you're still able to do all the same stuff you were doing before if you want to run old dungeons and rage you can still do that um here they have the new customization options there's a ton of new customization options to make your character really feel unique um tattoos haircuts um uh, um if Dude, you're playing an I undead love, character how rotten i you love are. character yeah. customization man that shit's so yeah cool. uh i've remade every single one of my characters um, the other day I went, I took them all to the barbershop and mm -hmm. they all feel unique and special. And I feel like they're the only one in the world now. Uh, whereas before I could go out and find my twin pretty <laughs> easily. I don't, I mean, I'm sure there's, I'm, my twin is probably still out there, but he's more lost <laughs> than he was before. Yeah. Um, and also representation is important in games. Um, so they, they did add new, um, uh, Skin Better versus skin tones and, and fa not just skin tones, but facial shapes as well that better ah, represent people. Cool. Um, um as well. And the, uh, what I, I feel like I'm barely scratching the fucking customization. Like it's a lot. It's a lot because each uh, each race has their own set of unique things that they can change. Yeah. And and also same for gender uh, the genders. Which by the way, you can change your gender at the barbershop now for free. You used to have to pay. Like real money if you want to swap your character's gender in the game, but you can do it for. I think it's just an in-game gold cost now. Um, 
to do that. Uh, like I swapped my uh, my shamans the other day because I was like, uh, male Draenei don't look that great, but the female Draenei look pretty cool. So, um, uh, but there's tons of things from jewelry to all that stuff um, for for yeah. characters. Um, uh, the pre patch events they touched on just a little bit. They're gonna there's gonna be like an invasion thing that happens with undead. Um, and then they're showing off some some stuff from uh, the expansion that's coming. And that's going to do it for all this video. They're just kind of showing off some uh, uh, a few uh, zones. The next thing I have for the WoW stuff. Yeah, were you going to say something? No, I, I, I like how the second comment on that video is like, Barber, hello, what could I do for you? Player, make me into a woman. Barber, sigh, grab his, grabs hedge clippers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, people were joking about it. Uh, yeah, you can't help but be kind of. It is kind of funny that you go to the barber shop for that, but <laughs> uh, there's lots of jokes. Um, the next thing is this little cutscene uh, that got released on the patch day. This takes place. Uh, I don't know if we watched the cinematic trailer for Shadowlands on here, where we had your boy the Lich I, King fighting Sylvanas, and I, I think we did. I think we did. Um, and this is immediately after that. Um, you got, you got Bovar, the current Lich King spoilers. Uh, but if you, Lord, if you don't know that by now, <laughs> it's been 15 years practically. Um, after the helm has been shattered, the helm of domination, I think it's called in, in Warcraft lore. She shattered it and, oh, look, they're even showing it right here. She shatters it and, and breaks the world and opens the, the realm to the Shadowlands. And he's like, oh no, this ain't good. Uh, and then we start cutting to all the all the leaders of the the alliance, kind of Jaina. watching this approaching cloud. Yeah, Jaina is there, um, looking fine. Uh, you got your boy. Oh yeah, you got Bane. Bloodhoof. This is Karen's son, Daniel. If you remember Karen Bloodhoof from Warcraft Three. Oh Bane. shit! There's, there's your boy Thrall. Yeah, the homie Thrall, Hang, man. Hanging out with his wife. Um, and you got your boy Manduin. I mean Anduin. Sorry. And uh, and uh, fucking wolf dude whose name escapes me right now. That's about to have a stroke in a minute because some bad things are happening. You get the you get the turn and look. I'm like, oh no, what's happening? And then there they are. Your boy draws his sword. He goes to have a fight, man. They took his ass away. Yeah, they kidnapped the king. Uh, and he's not in the game now. He's disappeared. Um, if you go to his throne room, somebody else is sitting on the throne temporarily. Damn. <laughs> um, um, and that's going to kick things off for the Shadowlands. <laughs> Hang uh, the old man yells at clouds is the first comment on this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sylvanas. Who's a bitch, by the way? Fuck Sylvanas. Everybody loves Sylvanas. <laughs> they sent for Sylvanas so hard. Dude, she's a fucking monster. Simp she's Bonus? terrible. Yeah, Sylvanas. She's a monster, and they're simping for her, and it's like, she literally killed so many people. She's, um, if you are in love with Sylvanas, you, you are in love with the Warcraft equivalent of Hitler at this point. Like, that's bad. You, What's wrong with you folks out there? Sorry. Uh, uh, thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Um, Josh is very passionate about World of, uh, World of Warcraft. <laughs> No, I just don't understand how you can see somebody so purely evil and be like, damn, she's hot. Uh, <laughs> like, she's yeah, also rotten. And you're you, know what, you, know, you know what, Josh? You know what it is? They're thinking with the wrong head. You know what I mean? Yeah, they definitely are. And, <laughs> yeah, anyway. and, and, move, and before we move on, she's undead, you weirdos. Like, <laughs> come on. Oh, uh, boy. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla has gone gold. Um. So that's uh, that means the game is 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 pretty much complete. They're just making copies now and working on the uh, patches and stuff that'll be coming in DLC content now, I guess. Uh, which it comes out November tenth, by the way. Um, yeah, that's uh, less than a month away at this point. So, so there's a chance, depending on how long you play Watch Dogs, that you could run into being like, "Man, Watch Dogs! Oh man, Assassin's Creed! Oh man, what what's next, Ubi?" 
And then, you know, Cyberpunk's later that month. Next month's going to be kind of loaded. Uh, so, Vigi game. Games. The, vid, the Vigi Games. Uh, which I've stayed away from a lot of information about the Creed, the new Creed, other than what we saw. Which, speaking of Cyberpunk, the uh, I was looking at the comments for this tweet right here of, of Assassin's Creed going gold. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Cyberpunk is congratulating them. So that's cool. Yeah, they're right there. They're, 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 giving, they're giving the old Leo. With the homie Leo, yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Uh, Wal- Walmart Canada Gaming, which they're the ones that like spoil everything. <laughs> Weren't they the ones that like spoiled shit from E3 like last year or whatever the hell? I think they uh, always funny. spoil shit. <laughs> they, yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's just funny that they're like in the comments. Uh, like, oh. There's a lot of people in the comments. Like, there's Stadia. Yeah, Stadia, uh, Stadia Xbox, uh, PlayStation UK, Gorilla. Radeon. Yeah. Um, Far Cry 6. It's just cool seeing, like, all these other, like, you know, accounts, like, reply to each other and whatnot. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. Outside. Assassin's Creed, going gold. Awesome. Cool, cool. And that is great. And I believe we have one final piece of gaming news here. One last thing for those of you that have your Total War Saga Troy uh, copies that you got for free on Epic. Because if you didn't get it, you're a fool because you totally should have because that's a free game. Um, That was brand new. It's getting some more free shit. It's getting some more free DLC, some free LC. We love that free LC. So -hmm. let's talk about what's in here. Uh, so the latest free content update will see the unt- introduction of Artemis, the goddess of the hunt. Um, so it's like some sort of new god. Uh, what's it mean in game? One new god added to their divine will system. It's a system in the game over there. They got some new uh, new building chains, some new agents, uh, some new units. Artemis. Um, a new region specifically dedicated to Artemis. That's cool. Um some uh, some missions they added. Um, some other things coming. Uh, photo mode is coming to Troy, uh, which is great. Every game should have a photo mode nowadays, unless it's something that, you know, unless you're like Tetris. <laughs> you don't need a photo mode. But you know what I mean? Like uh, Troy's powerful new photo mode brings you more than 20 different options to customize your in-game shots with, whether they're of epic clashes between huge armies, nerve-wracking hero duels, or simply a serene landscape. Uh, photo mode options are split into four main groups, each allowing you to tweak different settings. They are as follows. Scene, camera, uh, filters, and frames. And they got all these different things broken down in here. We're not going to go into them that much. Um, and this will be available in just a few days. It is available the 22nd of October. Uh, so wow. get your free LC. Get that free shit. Um, free LC. Hell yeah, I think dude. this is like the second piece of free LC. Like They, they gave away... The Amazons, which is a faction, I believe, that you can play as a playable faction in the game. They added that on there. We love free shit, and I'll always add it on the news list to inform people, hey, get your free shit. Hey, get your free shit. What are you doing? <laughs> you, I know not everybody loves Epic, but they're giving you free shit. Take it. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it's like a fucking uh, Maximus and Gladiator. Or, oh, who is it? While we do in life echoes in eternity. I don't know what that has to do with this, but fucking get your free shit on Epic. Get your um, free shit, I suppose. Um, that's <laughs> all the gaming news. That's it. Uh, yeah. So we can transition over to television news. Which speaking of uh, speaking of Greek shit, we have a trailer here oh, for an animated show called Blood of Zeus. That's so right. I don't know if you I don't know if you've seen this, Josh. But I this saw show like looks, a part of it. I saw like an ad for this on Twitter. This show looks cool, and it premieres on the twenty seventh of this month as well. So we love we love Greek shit. And, oh, uh, we absolutely do. <laughs> and here we go. This show looks dope, dude. I'm definitely gonna be checking it out. Oh, there's gonna be. Oh man, look at all that blood. There's gonna be some murders in this show. It's very it's it, it look it reminds me of Castlevania, you know? Yeah. Animation wise. So uh I think it's the same studio. So that's why it looks like that. But uh yeah, this mm-hmm. looks cool dope, dude. I can't wait to watch it so. I mean it's right up our alley. It's definitely Yeah, dude. Absolutely hundred percent. I've been playing a fuckload of Hades, like you know I'm gonna watch this. <laughs> 
the son of Zeus. Oh, that dude had sons all over the place. He couldn't keep his. Yeah, I was gonna say how many how many people did, how many people is Zeus gonna fuck in this show, dude? Yeah, I don't know, man. Like, yeah, but this is awesome, looks cool. Dude. I love the, some of the armor they've shown. I wonder. Uh, I wonder how many episodes it is. I haven't actually. I don't know. I actually haven't seen because I know like Castlevania is like really short, dude. Like yeah, the early seasons see, are like super short. I could see it being like eight or twelve or something like that, you know, or something. Or sorry, uh, I mean, that I, would I could be even nice, see it being like so. I could even see it be like four, but it's probably not four. But it's, that would be that'd be such a tease, though, man. Yeah, I know it'd be like I want more, but they've done that before when they did the first time they do a show. Yeah, because like Castlevania <laughs> again, the first one was only like three episodes. I'm like, dude, what the fuck, man? We need more than that. But anyway, that- <laughs> the first comment on here. You're son of Zeus. Yes, and so are a couple of thousand other people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Greek women exist. Zeus, congratulations. You now have a baby. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> You're the son it of looks, Zeus. So what? About cool. 20% of the people of Greece are, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh uh, that's funny. S- save the world from a demonic army. Premieres. <laughs> uh, oh, it premieres in ten days. Wow. Yeah, on the twenty seventh, dude. It's, uh, it's 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 close. You're, cool. You're so close. Yeah, it's, it's One more thing, I can be like, I need to watch that, and then don't. <laughs> Some stupid. And forget. I need to, dude. I need to catch up on so much stuff. I want to finish Dragon's Dogma. I want to do all kinds of things. But anyway. Let's uh, let's let's from 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 happy news to sad news. Uh, Netflix has canceled Glow. Oh, and uh, I was so is, disappointed. This is this is very disappointing because I enjoyed Glow. Josh enjoys Glow. Yeah, and and I was looking forward to season four, especially with the way they left off the third season. And yeah, they like, left man. on like a cliffhanger. A yeah, and, and now well now we're never gonna know, dude, because they just they fucking canceled. Man, it. Like, come on, man. I keep holding out hope. That something's gonna happen and be like, we're gonna do a movie and end it. We'll do like a quick movie on, on Netflix here, you know, kind of like they've done for other things. That's what I keep hoping. It's yeah, not gonna happen, I but know. I want it so bad. I loved Glow, man. I think it was a great show. It had great female characters. Um, it that was, was awesome. funny. It was. It was sad. It was great. It was just a good show. Yeah, man. It was. It was. It was. It was pretty damn great. I enjoyed it quite a bit. And like I'm not even that huge into wrestling, but it doesn't even matter. It's such a good show, man. Like, it's it's a shame that this show was canceled, man. Because it, yeah, it's a victim of the just, Rona too. Yeah, man. Like, that, that, I mean, that's why. Yeah, due to the coronavirus, it was canceled. Because initially they had renewed it for a fourth season, so we were, we were gonna get it, and then now because of the coronavirus, you know, this it's, it's another thing that the corona that you know the COVID took down, man. Unfortunately. Yep. Which sucks, dude. Sucks big time. But um, you know, it is what it is, man. I just I, I, I hope eventually they do wrap it up some way. Mm-hmm. But um I just I just don't know why they wouldn't wait and be like, all right, we're still gonna do season four, but we're gonna wait till all this stuff is over, you know? Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Like it, like w- why not just let the actors do other stuff in the meantime and then like once like everything is cleared up or whatever be like, all right, now we'll do season four. You know, like why? Why not just do that instead of being like, oh no, we're just gonna fucking cancel it. Yeah, they they um, I think the last time we were on the show or something, we talked about like Mine Hunters being canceled. Yeah. Technically, Mine Hunters isn't canceled. They just let the actors out of their contracts to go do other stuff. Apparently, they still want to do Mine Hunters, but they canceled Glow. So I'm a little salty over there. <laughs> I'll be honest. Yeah, <laughs> like, they yeah, just yeah. straight up canceled it. Why? Mm, disappointment. Such a good yeah, show. Yeah, that's that's yeah. It, it it is disappointing. But uh, yeah. you know, for every well, good thing, there's a bad thing. We got yeah. Cobra Kai, and we lost Glow. Glow. Yeah. Well, uh, Daniel, can you carry on for just a minute? I need to get up for a second. I'd still hear you, but I need you to go for carry it. the show for a second. We are going to talk about the Game of Thrones prequel series, House of the Dragon. They have cast their first actor. Patty Considine has been cast in the House of the Dragon show. Uh, he's an English actor. Uh, apparently, 
this man will be playing the role of King Viserys I, who, chosen by the lords of Westeros to succeed the old king, Jaehaerys Targaryen, at the Great Council of Harrenhal, a warm, kind, and decent man. Viserys only wishes to carry forward his grandfather's legacy, but good men do not necessarily make for great kings. Uh, so as we know, the House of the Dragon is the prequel Game of Thrones show, uh, from you know, based off of the uh, uh, Targaryen clan. Uh, I'm not necessarily sure when this show is supposed to be start filming or whatever. Uh, it I know it. Well, I guess they'll start filming like next year sometime. I assume because it's gonna air in 2022 and has a 10 episode uh season so far um so we'll see man i mean i hope my hope for this is that it'll be better for game of thrones and because honestly i haven't felt the need to do <laughs> or watch anything game of thrones related since the show ended yeah and uh i'm just you know i will be cautiously optimistic for this one um, it's going to be a prequel and it's going to be about, you know, the Targaryens and whatnot. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see, man. We'll, we'll see. But, uh, yeah, they got their first cast member, Josh, for, uh, House yeah, I heard. That's King, great. uh, King was the first. So, yeah. Hell yeah. Daniel, you know what time it is? It is, is it is, is it burger time? It is burger time. Cause that's where I went. <laughs> So yes. I'm going to be eating on stream. I apologize, guys. I don't usually like to do this, but I'm starving. So you have to forgive me. Moving on from that news, uh, Ewan McGregor says that the Obi-Wan Kenobi Disney Plus series is going to begin filming in March. Uh, it's been a while since we've heard anything about this, but uh, he had an uh, interview or an appearance on the BBC's The Graham Norton Show, and uh, Ewan revealed that... Uh, the untitled Obi-Wan Kenobi series is finally set to begin filming in March of 2021. Uh, this is a quote from him. He says, uh, it's the time, it's the Obi-Wan Kenobi story, I suppose. It's not all me, but it will certainly will be a lot of me, which is good. Uh, McGregor said of the show, we start shooting in, we start shooting it in March next year. Um, and, you know, there's been all kinds of behind the scenes stuff going on with this show and, for a while, we've heard like, oh, it was going to be a movie and then there's going to be a show. And then like, how many episodes is the show going to be? And like, it was it, and it, for a while, it was just rumored too. like it wasn't even confirmed until last year. I think it was confirmed at D23. Um, and they brought him out on stage and, you know, him and Kathleen Kennedy finally confirmed it and whatnot. Deborah Chow is going to be directing the uh, the episodes and stuff. So I'm I'm obviously Obi Wan Kenobi is my favorite character in all of Star Wars. So I'm very excited to for this to come out. I've been waiting for this for fucking for about 15 years, bro. Ever since Revenge of the Sith came out, I've been waiting for the Obi Wan Kenobi show or movie or whatever. And uh, you know, I'm 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 still waiting, man. Come on, let, let, let's do this. Let's get it done. Oh, yeah, let's, let's do it properly, man. So yeah, finally, finally, good, good news. Uh, in that regard, next up we have uh, a new Godzilla anime series coming to Netflix. Uh, it's going to be called Godzilla Singular Point. Uh, it expands Netflix's roster of projects tied to the King of Monsters. The sh uh, Netflix previously had a bunch of anime Godzilla films like Godzilla Planet of the Monsters, Godzilla City on the Edge of the Battle, Godzilla the Planet Eater. Uh, Singular Point will not be directly tied to the films and will feature an entirely new storyline and cast. It is currently slated to debut in 2021. Uh, director Atushi, At Atushi uh, Takahashi, uh, the creative team of Khan Sawada, the composer for the uh, Doraemon films and series such as uh, Yawamushi Petal, a Japanese science fiction novelist, To Injo, 
will be making his TV debut as as editor and writer for the series. Um, and yeah, they're they're pretty much gathering up. Basically, they're gathering a bunch of Japanese talent for the show, which makes sense because we all know where Godzilla comes from. Um, Anime Studio Bones will produce it in partnership with Studio Orange, combining hand-drawn and CG animation styles. Hmm. So that's pretty cool. I know that like <laughs> uh, Jake is like the big Godzilla guy, and he he is kind of like he's kind of like iffy on this because I think he said that the other Godzilla stuff Netflix had done wasn't that great. But mm-hmm. I feel like this one is going to be different because it's not attached to any of that stuff or any of the movies or anything like that. It's going to be its own new thing. It's going to have the Japanese, you know, a bunch of Japanese talent working behind it. So I feel like this might be good, but we'll have to oh. see when the trailer comes out or something. Yeah. I got to see what, um, how their style is going to look. Because that yeah, can make your bre- that can make or break anything. Yeah, like the hand drawn CG styles is is going to be interesting. But yeah, no, it's true because I started watching Dragon's Dogma, and let me tell you, man, the fucking animation in that show is probably the worst thing about it. It's so jarring to me. Like when I'm watching that, I'm like, this is just weird. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we have a trailer next. You can put it up. Oh on the yeah, for us. we have the Unsolved Mysteries Volume Two. I'm excited for this. Which, guess what? This drops on Monday. Oh, shit. This upcoming Monday. Uh, so on the 19th, for those of you wondering. October 19th. And uh, yeah, man, this is this is cool. I I really like season one. Mm-hmm. So I'll be very, 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 very curious to check this one out. Because there is some some crazy shit that goes on in this. Gotta gotta solve these mysteries, man. Yeah. Oh, and this whole thing about the Japanese don't separate the you know the the living from the dead thing and like that's I know that people were wanting more of like the uh, what is it, like the more of like a supernatural, supernatural type thing. Yeah, in the first season, this looks like it's gonna bring more of that. Six new mysteries. Tsunami spirits, stolen kids, lady in the lake, Washington insider murder, a death in Oslo, and death row fugitive. Yeah, man, I uh, I love the first season, um, and I grew up. I mean, we grew up watching this shit, right? Like the first, the original, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad it got like <clears throat> with uh, Robert you know. Stack. Yeah. Yep. And then they had one with like. It was kind of like the same show, but they had Dennis Farina hosting it for a bit. And if you have Pluto TV, they have like marathons of it on there all the time. And um, oh my god, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the comments now. That first comment, like, for every mystery, there's someone somewhere who knows the truth. Perhaps that someone is watching. Perhaps it's you, oh, by Robert man. Stack. Gives you chills, man. <laughs> but yeah um, if you haven't first, uh, checked the first season and you're super into uh, mysteries highly recommend strong recommend from me mm-hmm. anyway, what do we got next let's move on to the next one we have uh, the we have the writers for the Green Lantern TV series at HBO Max Seth Graham Smith and Mark Guggenheim are going to be uh, uh, at the helm for the show. Uh, so Seth Graham Smith is the writer of the Lego Batman movie, which I don't know if you've seen that, but it's I thought it was pretty good. No, I haven't seen it. It's it's pretty cool. I, I, I like it. I would recommend checking it out. Uh, and then Mark Guggenheim, who's the co-creator of Arrow and the writer of the 2011 Green Lantern movie, so that doesn't bode well. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, why would you bring this guy on, dude? He did the Green Lantern movie. Why would you bring him onto the fucking show? Come on, man. 
But uh, I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully they'll like. I don't know. Hopefully he won't get as much. Isn't like, Guggenheim the guy or... that everybody says has ruined the CW verse? Yeah, or contributed to it? Yeah, yeah. That that's that's. What I, it is. Uh, so, yeah. So, so to be honest, this news isn't that great. Uh, no, it's not. That's terrible news. <laughs> yeah, no. It's it's it kind of doesn't bode well for the show. But I mean, I I don't mm. know, man. I don't know, man. There's, there's always a, like a small chance, right? Like it'd be... There's the, there's a good and the bad here, man. Because I because like I said, Seth Graham Smith is pretty good. The the Lego Batman movie was was was, was pretty great. And then at one point they had him working on the Flash movie, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, uh, the, this show is gonna portray or gonna have a, a multitude of lanterns, including Guy Gardner, Jessica Cruz, Simon Baz, Alan Scott, which is of course the first Green Lantern. Uh, who also some of you may not know, but is 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 a true to the comics is is a gay man, and uh, oh the popo are coming. Uh, the series Sorry. will also include fan favorites such as Sinestro and Kilowog, and introduce new heroes to the ranks of the Green Lantern Corps. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, man. I'm this is going to be something that I was excited for, but but with Mark Guggenheim attached now, I'm kind of like. We're gonna have to wait and see, man. We're gonna have to wait and see. I don't know, dude. I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, but anyway, we can move on from that. Have you seen the Animaniacs reboot clip? I did. Hang on, let me open it. All right, cool. Because this is this is pretty great, dude. I think Majin showed this to me because I I knew this was coming out, but I didn't see it until Majin was like, "Yo, did you see this?" And I'm like, "No, I'll check it out." And it's pretty funny. It's, it's it it is it's pretty funny. They got the Jurassic Park in here with uh with the Animaniacs. It's pretty great, man. It's, mm-hmm. it's pretty great. They <laughs> it's <laughs> this species of cartoons have been extinct since 1998. <laughs> the golden era of animation, dude. The 90s. I would. It I, really I was. I might agree with that. Yeah. Uh, I do agree with that. It was. It's the Warner Brothers. And then fucking Steven Spielberg, dude. <laughs> I'm just like la- walking by laughing. That shit's funny, dude. Holy crap. Then Jeff Goldblum there. <laughs> These don't look like reruns. <laughs> We're going to make a fortune with this show. The Hulu guy, yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, the music is playing in the background. That's great. Pinky in the brain. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> this fucking Alan. Oh shit, he, he passed out. Even if this is terrible, which I don't think it's going to be. Uh, not nah. with a clip like that. But even if it was, it's worth it just for that. That November tw- November twenty. This is a lot sooner than I thought too. And also, they're bringing back for those of you who don't know, they're they are bringing back the original voice actors. So, don't um, worry about we're... that as well. Uh, yeah, that looks fun, dude. I I actually have enjoyed some of these like reboots of these shows that they brought, like Ducktales, dude. Doug, the Ducktales reboot is great. I'm not caught up with it. Like I'm 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 not up to date, but um. The stuff that I have seen is pretty good. So, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be fun. Oh, yeah. Speaking of another show I'm not caught up with, uh, Star Trek Discovery was renewed for season four. I, I bring this up because I used to watch it, and I know that you watched some of it as well. I watched a little bit of it, yeah. Yeah, so I'm not, like, the biggest Star Trek fan. I know I've said that a bunch of times, but I'll reiterate it again for people who are watching for the first time or don't remember or anything. I'm not the biggest Star Trek guy. But I did watch some of Discovery, and it was fine. I, f- I feel like it was okay. But some of the characters I didn't really care for, it was some of the like characters that they added for the second season. Because currently season three is airing right now on TV. It just started. Mm-hmm. And I'm not caught up with that. But um, I've seen season one and season two. And I like the characters that they introduced in season two more than the original characters from the show. Mm-hmm. 
and I know that they're getting a spinoff or they were getting a spinoff. So I don't know if that's still happening or not, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, I honestly don't even know if I'm going to continue watching this show. Cause yeah. like there's, just, there's just so much out there to, you know, keep an eye on everything. But uh, I figured we'd mention this r- real quick since we both watched some of it. Yeah. I've been watching uh, the, the next generation a lot. Uh, Star Trek, which is the fucking old, old Captain Picard and Riker and all those characters. And man, those are great characters. And then I think about Discovery and I think, man, the show exists. Mm hmm. But there's people out there who like it. So, yeah, more, more, more power to you guys. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, they're getting a season four. So, there you go. Um, anyway, moving on. Uh, on. This is a show that I haven't seen, but Dexter. Is is getting a limited series revival? Uh, I, I watched most lot, of Dexter. I know that a lot of people were pretty hyped for this, and they like they liked the show when it first aired. And, but I heard that like the later seasons were like not great. Or later they, seasons weren't great, and the finale was terrible. It so, was terrible. So I imagine Sorry. that they're gonna fix that with these ten episodes. That'll be airing in fall of next year, 2021. That'll be uh, interesting. So we'll see what they do. I haven't seen any of this show, so I can't really speak on it or how it ended or the characters or anything like that. But I know there's a lot of people that are looking forward to this. So there you go. That's uh, where the surprise motherfucker memes come from. Yeah, that, that, I, that, I, that I did know. <laughs> um, I guess they were like, surprise, motherfucker. Another season. Uh, I I know how much you love Grease, Josh, so we're going to talk about that real quick. Um. (laughs) (laughs) I just realized what you meant. I was like, what? (laughs) And then I looked at the the article. I was like, oh. Yeah. yeah, The the Grease spinoff series is moving from HBO Max to Paramount Plus. So I know we kind of mentioned this before in the past. Uh, you know, Greece said that the John Travolta movie from you know way back when in the seventies and your your mom's it, favorite movie, guys. yeah, pretty much, yeah, yeah. That, that's a good way to put it. Your your parents' favorite the disco movie, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because my mom a, loved it. They're doing a spinoff series of the show. It's and it's moving now. It was supposed to be an HBO Max. They're moving it from HBO Max to Paramount Plus. Which I'll be honest. I didn't even know that Paramount Plus Paramount Plus was a thing. I know I didn't know it's a thing. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even know it was a thing, but now I do. So okay, good good luck to you. This is this is gonna be a problem though. Like, how many streaming services are there gonna be, dude? Like, come on. There's just so many, dude. Like, I knew this was gonna happen though too. Like, once like n- n- you know, because Netflix was, was was a thing, and like Hulu was a thing, and. You know, we got Disney Plus and some of these other ones, but like now everybody wants to have their own stream. It's it's turning into cable the cable wars 2.0, dude. Everybody yeah. wants to have their own damn streaming service. But anyway, and then they'll co- then they'll combine them into one big thing again, and then it'll be like buying a t- subscription. It'll be like having regular TV again, yeah, yeah. all over. It's a fucking yeah, it's, cycle. It's, it's the cycle, yeah. <laughs> but anyway. That's a whole nother the streaming service thing is a whole nother whole nother topic. Um we're done with the TV news, so let's go ahead mm. and move over to the uh movie news. Yes. We have a trailer up. So we have the first off, we have the free guy trailer, which this looks pretty neat. It looks like a fun, silly video game M- movie. Yeah. It's like it's like if GTA was real, except not. Basically, yeah. Do you ever think there's more? As he gets fucking killed many, mm-hmm. many times. Punched in the face. I got subtitles on for this for the people watching at home. That lady's name is Molotov Girl. Molotov Girl, yeah. I like how they like they they run like a fucking video game character. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
He found the button. <laughs> he found the button. Yeah. I I kind of I want to see this. Yeah, um, I do too, man. It's gonna be fun. Um, you know, I like Ryan Reynolds and I like video games and. And uh, that's a minigun. That's what that is. Yeah. <laughs> this movie is going to release on December 11th, 2020. So this is coming out this year. They fucking got Alex Trebek in this, dude. Fucking you Michael boy. Yeah. Look at this shit, man. This fucking uh, Steve from Stranger Things is in here. Dude. Yeah, this looks like it's going to be a fun time, dude. Yeah, it just looks fun. You know, it's popcorn yeah. flick. Exactly. Like Wreck It Ralph, but looks, real it looks people. So much better than Pixels, bro. You remember the Pixels? Yeah. That movie was atrocious. This movie's going to be better than uh, Keanu's accent in Dracula. Oh, man. Uh, Damn. <laughs> Damn. Damn. <laughs> we still love uh, Keanu. That was, that was terrible. Oh, to be fair, Pixels was better than Keanu's accent in Dracula. Uh, Uh, Olatov grow, dude. That's an interesting, uh, interesting name. We we love you, blue shirt guy. Oh shit! Yeah, they they, 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 nice. they they ain't gonna be in a fall, free guy too. <laughs> yeah, that looks fun. Like, how could yeah. you hate on that? That looks fun. Yeah, this just looks like a fun time. Uh, next up, we have a bunch of movie <laughs> news of things getting delayed. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I uh, yeah. So first up. We'll talk about Denis Villeneuve's Dune is getting moved to late 2021. I want to. I do want to say I called this <laughs> in like Josh the week called. before it happened. I was like, they're gonna push Dune, Josh and they pushed it, it like several, way far. Yeah, you called this like several uh, <laughs> several episodes ago, I believe. Yes, uh. but it's getting pushed from December of this year, I believe, un- until October 1st, 2021. So it's almost like a whole year. It was supposed to come out on December 18th, and it got pushed to October twenty, October 1st, 2021. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, of course, we figured this would happen. I mean, they they want to they want to have they want this movie to be a movie theater movie, you know. So it makes sense. Yeah. Hopefully, I saw, the, I saw a lot of people were like surprised, like why why October 2021? If you want to know the truth, the grim truth is that we're probably not going to have a COVID vaccine till the summer of 2021. So if you want to know the really true hard truth, this is probably the most realistic push for any movie so far that I've seen. Um, just based on the things that I've heard. Yeah. It, 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 yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. It's a me. bummer, but. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I look forward to it when it comes out because I'm excited for Dune, and I know a lot of my friends are too. Amber, Thack, Bigfoot, uh, Daniel is gonna dip his toes into Dune for the in the I'll, sands. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna let the spice flow, dude, and I'm gonna check this movie mm-hmm. out. Yeah. Uh, next year now, apparently. It's, again, I don't know any. I don't know much about Dune, but uh, I, this movie looks intriguing to me, and I like the cast, so we're gonna we're gonna check it out. The spice must flow next year. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, continued movie delays. The Batman is moving from 2021 to 2022, which is a bummer, but understandable. Yeah, so that trailer got me so hyped too. So me too, man. That I I can't wait for that movie. So so originally the Batman was supposed to be on October 1st, 2021, but now Dune took that spot. So Batman is being pushed to March 4th, 2022. Um, Matrix Four is is uh. Is is pushed up instead of pushed back. Uh, so originally the Matrix Four was going to come out April first, twenty twenty two, and it got pushed up to December twenty second, twenty twenty one. So that one got pushed up a few months. So not everything is getting pushed back. Some things are getting pushed forward. Uh, Pieces are in motion. Yeah, th- things are. Yeah, especially right now, there's things constantly in in motion and movement. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, the F- the Flash is uh, moving from June third to November fourth, twenty twenty two. Shazam two has been pushed from November fourth, twenty twenty two, to June second, twenty twenty three. 
the Black Adam movie uh, was originally going to be in December 21st or December 22nd, 2021. Uh, and the and the and the Minecraft movie, which is going to come out on March third, twenty twenty two, have both been taken off the calendar completely. So those are going to have to find. Different oh software. no! Say it ain't so. Yeah, Black Not Adam, a Minecraft movie. Black Adam, and Minecraft man, they've been taken off the calendar. I am bummed by the Black Adam one. Uh, I, I feel like the Minecraft movie is like ten years too late. I I think they missed the, at, yeah. at least at least like five years too late, you know. Like I, like I was looking forward to Black Adam though. So well, I mean, it it'll come out. Of, it was just they're still gonna come out, but it's just like well, they have to find different spots for them. But I get you. I, I get don't you. want. I don't want to find another spot. I wanted that. No. The the worst part of Black about Black Adam is that we've been hearing about this movie for like ten years now, and like right, so little information about it. Yeah. Like just barely this year, they they fucking like officially like you know talked about it um uh but wonder woman is still set to release this year on christmas so we'll see we'll see uh and i uh, I thought that was gonna get pushed but it hasn't yet i did too but you know it hasn't so far uh which pixar soul is also releasing on the 25th and they moved that one from theaters to disney plus and the cool thing about pixar or about soul is that um, they're not charging extra like they did for Mulan. It's just gonna be a, you know, free on Disney Plus on Christmas. Cool. So if you have Disney Plus, you'll be able to watch so, it. Yeah, uh, you got a you get a little Christmas present from uh, the Disney guys over there. Yeah, man. <laughs> they're uh, like, we've we've been printing money for a while. Let's give something for free. <laughs> in 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 another uh, in more news of of delays, Jurassic World Dominion uh, has been delayed to 2022. Uh, it'll be precisely releasing on june 10th 2022 a year later than originally planned because it was supposed to release in the summer of next year but they pushed it back to 2022 and they released the 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 first poster for it i don't know if you've seen it it looks pretty cool yes i did see it let's let's it's open like, it up here. it's like oh, uh, black and yellow and it looks pretty cool it's like a piece of amber or something, you know, with like the yeah. Little... Look at that. Let me open that up so we can. Yeah, it, it looks it looks it looks pretty dope, and has a date at the bottom, and I like it. I dig it. I dig it. It looks pretty cool. Look at that cast. Sam Neill is coming back. Jeff Goldblum, Laura Dern, Bryce Dallas Howard, Chris Pratt. It's a heck of a cast, man. I feel like. Well, I hope that this will be the best one of the three Jurassic World movies. Because I like the first one, but there are some things that I dislike about it too. And then the second one I just thought was terrible. I, I never I didn't even see it. I never saw it. I never saw it. That favorite. movie was just rough, dude. I was like, oh good lord, this was just bad. So I'm hoping that this last one is gonna be where it's at. So we'll see. But anyway, that movie got pushed back. Um, and we're going to move on to some casting news now. Um, we have the Resident Evil reboot cast announced. Um, so let's talk about that here. Uh, the story is set in 1998 on a fateful night in Raccoon City, uh, which by the way, I forgot to mention, but this is going to be more faithful to the, uh, you know, the the games not like mm-hmm. the not like the other movies with Mila jo- Jovovich which were not uh but anyway so Kaya uh Scodelario is going to be uh Claire Redfield um Hannah John Kamen is going to be Jill Valentine uh Robbie Amell is going to be Chris Redfield Tom Hopper is going to be Albert Wesker Avon Jogia is going to be uh Leon S Kennedy Neil McDonough will be William Birkin. So those are those are six cast members we have so far. Um, I think this is an interesting uh, interesting cast so far with what they what they have. Um, I like it. I like it, man. Yeah, it'll be it'll be it'll be, be be cool, man. I I think I think they're they're pretty decent choices. Like I'm I'm curious to see what what they're gonna what they're gonna do. 
I mean, and, it can't uh, get any worse. Like, yeah, it can't, can't get worse than the, than the you've other You've already right? seen. <laughs> you've already seen the worst, right? Like, yeah, basically. And like, <laughs> you, and even though monster. like the, the Monster Hunter movie isn't a continuation <laughs> of that, it looks just as bad as those movies because it's the same dude working on them, man. Yeah. Like, monster Hunter looks terrible, dude. It's because it's the same guy that worked on the Resident Evil movies working on that. But anyway, that's a whole other thing. But yeah, the Resident Evil cast looks cool. Uh, exciting, exciting stuff. Um, there Disney has a live action Space Mountain movie in the works. Rick Flair what... better have a cameo appearance, or I'm a boom day. Yeah, dude, he he, oh my god, he better, dude, he better. I want him to be in the corner, just as like some senile old man being like, even, I want to even... ride Space Mountain. No, I, I want him to say, I just want him to say one, like, even if he has just like a one liner, I want him to say, uh, uh. <laughs> Oldest ride, longest line, or something like that. You know? Yes, yes. <laughs> so oldest ride, longest line. <laughs> Woo! That's it. That's all oh my to god! Do. That's all he has oh to do. Oh my god! Oh, but I would, I would watch the movie at least twice just for that. <laughs> you just have to bring him in for that, and that's it, dude. It'd be, it'd be amazing. It'd be incredible. Oh my god! I would cry. That's all they have to do, and I'd love it. Uh, but yeah, I don't know what they're planning on doing with this. Um. <clears throat> But uh, I mean, like they've done other movies based off of rides. Like, I like I love like I really like the first part, like the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. You know, that's mm-hmm. a movie based off a of ride. Uh, Tomorrow Tomorrowland was not great. I don't know if you saw that one. That one wasn't that. That one was not that that good. Uh, Haunted Haunted Mansion with Eddie Murphy was kind of terrible. So they have had their they have had their hits and misses. But you know, I'm hoping that whatever they do with this will be, you know. At, at least decent and not terrible like some of the other ones. But anyway, um, Joby Harold, uh, whose whose credits include uh, the upcoming Army of the Dead movie from Zack Snyder and that terrible ass King Arthur movie, um, oh, is going to be producing. Uh, and who else we have here? Uh, Harold is, but but also Joby Harold is currently writing. Uh, an executive producing for the Obi Wan series, and he also uh, executive produced on John Wick Chapter Three. So, you know, he's I think I think he's done more good than bad because that God, good Lord, that fucking King Arthur movie was just atrocious. But no, uh, it was awful. We group watched that together. That movie's fucking terrible. I, I thought it was it's dog shit. Like I, it's, I, wanted, <laughs> I wanted my I wanted my two hours back, dude. That shit sucks. Yeah, I wanted my two hours back and a refund. I didn't even pay for the movie. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, we'll see what they do with this uh, Space Mountain movie. Yeah, basically, I if they do something like what they did with Pirates of the Caribbean, that'd be dope. And then uh, yeah, I I I, I it, on behalf of the Clockwork Cantina, me and Josh mm-hmm. Disney. Please give Ric Flair a cameo where he says yes. longest line, oldest ri- or oldest ride, longest line. Please and thank you. That's mm-hmm. all I ask. We only uh, have we're only gonna have him so long, man. Don't miss out on this grand opportunity. Please, it, please. You can please have, have a franchise, have, okay? This movie's gonna be a hit. You're gonna have you're gonna it's gonna be like Marvel movies, right? You need to film like six Ric Flair cameos. <laughs> 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 She's gonna go. Woo, 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 woo. Uh, okay. Oh my god! I would Be cry. Good. I would cry from happiness. Oh god! Anyway, we have some Marvel news here. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch is gonna play Doctor Strange in the next Spider-Man movie. Cumberbatch. So yeah, uh, we know that. This basically confirms that they're going to be doing multiverse shit. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because Doctor Strange Two is called In the Multiverse of Madness. So you're bringing Doctor Strange over to Spider Man, and we've had you know a lot of Spider Man casting rumors lately. Um, those of which include you know we talked about I think last episode Jamie Fox coming back as Electro, and you know obviously we still have J Jonah Jameson. The J.K. Simmons version, um, but yeah, I mean that's cool, dude. I, 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 I'm all about having Doctor Strange in things. Remember, um, Spider Man. 
Remember not that long ago they were like, yeah, we're not going to put Spider-Man in too many more in like any more Marvel movies. Yeah. And then, and now we, and now they're like, all right, we're doing one more. Let's fucking throw well, everything at it. Well, kind of deal, you know what I mean? Yeah. You say that, but this might be their way of like, <clears throat> being it is. like we're going to, we're going to, you know, if, if they, if this is how they like remove Tom Holland from the MCU, they, this is their chance to do it, dude, with the multiverse. Yeah. Ship. Yeah. They could do it. If they want to include Venom in this, or you know, because I, I, mean, that, I, I that, also appreciate them throwing everything in there though, because this is going to be I've, I'm super excited now. Yeah, this is going to be a heck of a movie, dude. So we'll see what they do with it. I don't know what they're going to do with it, but hopefully it's going to be good. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I'm 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 optimistic about the movie. Uh, speaking of Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange Two has cast uh, Sochil Gomez. Uh, in the movie, uh, she's a young Latina actress um, who many people are speculating will be America Chavez. I think is the name. Is that is that the name of the character? So she hasn't been confirmed to be anything, but <clears throat> there, people are, are 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 guessing that she's going to be playing the character of Miss America, aka America Chavez. She is a member of the Young Avengers. <clears throat> which I assume at some point or another they're going to introduce into the MCU. But I people are... I saw some dumbass shit on Twitter. Like, people just, like... I, I don't even want to get into it, but I know I brought it up. But, I mean, it's just, like, people just being dumb on Twitter because they cast this, this, this girl as being, like, a character. As, they think... She got cast as America Chavez when we, re- in actuality, we don't actually know who she's cast as. So, I think people need to chill out and wait for what the official stuff is. And even if she is cast as America Chavez, why is that so bad? Like, relax. Because the whole thing was, I think people were saying that like America Chavez is more of like an Afro Latina, which like you know she's basically like a black Latina, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And the actress they cast is not a black Latina. She's just like a, she's just like a Latina. Right. Um, like, like she, she, I, I want to say she's, she Mexican. So she Gomez. I don't, but basically the character of, of Miss America of America Chavez is like a Puerto Rican woman. Right. Mm. And I think the actress that they cast, I'm trying to figure out what she, but she's, I don't know if she is or isn't Puerto Rican, but I don't know. But anyway, Twitter is going nuts over this. And the whole point is they're they're losing their minds over something that's, in my opinion, just so like unnecessary. Yeah, uh, Twitter's dumb it, a little it's, time. It's not, it's not like they cast fucking Scarlett Johansson or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like chill yeah. the fuck out, dude. They didn't they didn't cast a white person. They cast a Latina to play a Latina. Chill out, man. Calm down, dude. And and again, we don't even know that this is the same character. She's, we don't even know that she's going to be that character. She's, she's we, all we know right now is that she was cast in Doctor Strange two, and her part is unknown. So I think I think everybody needs to chill out and calm down. But anyway, we'll move on to uh, continued continuing here with Disney. We have the trailer for Disney and Pixar's Soul, which I'm going to be honest. I think this movie is going to be a fucking another one of Pixar's like fucking uh, feels movies. Not like not like they don't all give you the feels, but some are just stronger than others. Right. Mm-hmm. And I feel like this one is going to bring the strong feels, man. Like this movie is going to be great, I think. So it's yeah, streaming on, on December 25th on Christmas. It's and our yeah, Christmas be, present, everybody. Yeah, this is this is a Pixar's and Disney's Christmas present to us. The animation uh, looks great. Yeah, it, this movie looks like it's going to be awesome. I'm about it, dude. I can't wait to watch it. I love Pixar, and, and this just looks like an, like it's going to be another one of their great movies, you know? Mm-hmm. I haven't actually watched this trailer. Oh, it's it's so good. It made me more excited for this movie than I already was. I'll have to watch this sound the- later. There's a specific line in the trailer that made me crack the fuck up because it's like, damn, damn. 
I'll tell you when we get to it. H E hockey sticks. <laughs> They're like hell, 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 hell. So here we are. The whole like idea and concept behind this is pretty fucking interesting too. Damn. Like, the, like yeah, I think that this was one. <laughs> That's the line. Did you see it? Yeah. You can't crush a soul here. That's what life on earth is for. It's like, damn. Jesus. That's funny. And true. <laughs> yeah. My poor soul's a pancake. Look at this, man. This this movie looks fantastic. Just I seeing all the this, animation is like really just seeing all this uh, all this liveliness in the streets of New oh, York. Man, I saw Baba's boat. Wherever this is, it's like man, there's a pink pirate ship back there, man. Yeah. That sucks. Can you imagine <laughs> trying to eat a pizza and like you can't, no smell, no taste, no touch. You just poop it out. Like it's nothing. <laughs> Damn. Well, yeah, that looks good. Yeah, that movie looks great, dude. I I can't wait. We we're, we're going. Yeah, that that movie looks looks awesome. I, I again, it just looks like it's gonna be another one of those Pixar like one another one of the great Pixar movies that they'll have added to their uh, to their uh, library of great movies. Um, uh, but yeah. Um, moving on. Continuing with Disney, <clears throat> they're gonna add Disney Plus adds content warning to some of their movies. Um, so if you click on the link there, and if you scroll down, there's an image, which I think this is pretty, uh, pretty, pretty important for them to do because, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> I would. I, I like that they're doing this. Um, that they're saying, "Yo, this the movie you're about." Or, or, or you know what? Not not even gonna interpret it in my own words. We're we're just gonna read the thing that they have on here. Okay. Yeah. It says they have a black screen, and then they they have like a little a little message before the start of certain movies, such as like 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 before you watch uh, Dumbo or Peter Pan or some of these other movies, they have this message that says this program includes negative depictions and or mistreatment of people or cultures. These stereotypes were wrong then and are wrong now. Rather than remove this content, we want to acknowledge its harmful impact, learn from it, and spark conversation to create a more inclusive future together. Disney is committed to creating stories of inspirational and aspirational themes that reflect the rich diversity of the human experience around the globe. To learn more about stories of impact to society, visit www.disney.com slash stories matter. So they, they have that. Yeah. Uh, which I think this is good because I agree. I, 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 do I don't too. think they should remove the content either. I would prefer yeah. them to have something like this. So people who want to watch something can see this. Then they get to decide on their own if they want to continue watching this or not. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I think this is... I think this is a a, a good a, a very good thing for them to do. So, I approve of this move. And yeah, I don't think it's I don't think it's wise to remove things, you know, like you, that. I think you, you can't like, um you can't ahead. erase your mistakes, right? Like uh you have to own that shit. You have to and learn, you have to from, learn it. from it. Yeah, yeah. And you have to learn from it. Um so, yeah, I think this is good. I'm glad they did this. I'm glad they're not just Trying to hide it or erase it, like they're owning it. You have to own your shit. So yeah, um. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, That's I thought. All I had to say. No, I just thought I thought this would be good to bring up because I think it's important that they do, and you know, <laughs> um, and include in, in some of the stuff that you know may not be that time does not. Uh, reflect on favorably nowadays, you know? It didn't age well. Um, <clears throat> but you still include it and you still add the message at the beginning and you let people decide for themselves whether or not they want to watch it. And, you know, you just, you, 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 you know, basically what, what they put in their message there is is pretty much like, it's it pretty much spot on. It's, it's, it's great. It's good. Um, <clears throat> we only have a couple more things left here in our movie news, but let's, so let's get ahead to them. 
Uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance is getting a live action adaptation uh, from Warhorse Studios and Eric Barmick. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, Barmick and Sega is they're also working on the Yakuza movie, which we've talked about in I think last episode or the one before that. I forget, but we've talked about it. And they're also doing the Kingdom Come Deliverance one uh, stuff. So, uh, yeah, this will be interesting. I feel like, like I've played the game now, so I can I can speak on it now, uh, and say that I feel like this could be a pretty solid movie because yeah. I actually I actually you've played it too, right? No, I haven't played it yet. No, you haven't. Okay, I I have it, but I haven't played it. Okay, well, I feel like like now that I've played it, like a lot of the cutscenes and the story and stuff. It's pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, depending on how they do it, if they do it well, this could be a pretty damn great movie, you know? Like, I feel like I could enjoy the movie more than the game, dude. Cause it they're, they're, they're... <laughs> it could be the King Arthur that we never got. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, <laughs> like, this movie could be great, dude. Like, like it legit could. If, if they do it properly and, and, and they go about it the right way, this movie could be fantastic, man. Mm -hmm. So we'll, I'll be waiting to see what happens with it. Um, but yeah, I, I'm going to be cautiously optimistic because, yeah, I, I, I like the game, but I also didn't. Uh, it's kind of weird because, like, I had a lot of bugs and crashes and, like, stupid shit that, like, made the game, like, less enjoyable for me. Mm -hmm. um, but, like the, sto like, the story I liked. So if you take that and make it to a movie, I could see the movie being like really, really fantastic. So, uh, yeah, hoping good things for that. Um, moving on the Mad Max spinoff Furiosa is now in the works, uh, with George Miller directing and, uh, Anya Taylor joy will be portraying Furiosa. Uh, cause Charlie Theron is not coming back for this. Cause, I think we talked about it in the past as well. She wanted to do it, but they wanted to go with somebody younger. So, yeah, they're getting, they're getting Anya Taylor Joy. Uh, Chris Hemsworth and Yaha Abdul Mateen II are are joining the cast as well. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, Chris Hemsworth obviously is Thor, and Yaha Abdul Mateen II was Black Manta from uh, Aquaman, and he's also uh, in the Watchmen TV series, and he's actually he's in a bunch of stuff. But anyway. They're joining the cast. Um, I really like Fury Road, the the Mad Max movie from five years ago, which I can't believe it's been five years now. God, man. I remember when it came out and that fucking first trailer dropped and that shit was tight. Yeah, that movie is that's like one of the best like action movies of the past decade for sure. Yeah, agree. Um probably of all time too, but that that one it's it's past decade certainly. Um but yeah, so we're they're they're starting to shape up the cast. And all, all three of those people, Anya Taylor-Joy, Chris Hemsworth, and Yaha Abdul-Mateen II, they're all great. So anytime a movie adds talent, dude, I'm, I get a little bit more excited for it. So, And and again, and I like Fury Road, so things are shaping up pretty well for this movie so far. I just wish yeah. that Charlize could, could still be Furiosa, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. Because I really like Charlize as, in general, because I think Charlize is, is, is amazing. In general, yeah, but, uh, she's great. But, but she was fantastic as Furiosa too. So I, you know, sucks that she's not gonna be be coming back. But Anya Taylor Joy is pretty good too. So you know, we'll see. We'll see what she does with her interpretation of the character. Um, and finally, we have Michael B. Jordan is gonna be producing the Static Shock movie. Uh, so Michael B. Jordan, as as you know, you guys know, he's uh yes. uh. He's Creed from the Creed movies, and you know he's, he was or, or Adonis Creed from the Creed movies rather, and he was Eric Eric Killmonger in uh, Black Panther, and you know he's been Fruitvale Station and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, he's gonna be producing the Static Shock movie uh, that was unveiled during the DC fandom uh, a couple months ago. Um, so this is very exciting because. Uh, yeah, man. I feel like Static Shock is a character that should have had a movie like forever ago. And, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Thousand percent agree. Love Static. It's, it's kind of crazy that it hasn't happened yet because, like, mm -hmm. we've had like a TV show for him and like a bunch of other stuff. And, like, you know, come on, man. 
Why, why, why is there no static shock yet? But they're finally working on it. So, so yeah, I mean, Michael, Michael B. Jordan is 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 a great dude, and uh, it's good that he's going to be involved in the Static Shock movie. Um, so yeah, this is this is good news. But uh, I think that'll wrap up our news section of this uh, episode. Two and uh, a half hours late. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, we skipped a week, man, so we had more stuff to talk about. But now we can finally get into the main topic. So I think we should just go ahead and jump into that. Well, let's, let's do it. Let's hit it. I don't need no break. Let's go. All right. Well, let's go ahead. So The Boys Season 2. Now, <clears throat> we're going we're gonna to forewarn you guys. Um, the, We will be getting into spoilers. We'll, we'll probably start try to start off with non-spoilers, but we will talk spoilers. So just be you're being forewarned that this is something that is going to happen. Let me put up a, a thing <clears throat> real quick. Or it's a text message here. Season 2 spoilers. There we go. So I think first off, let's talk about... So The Boys Season 2 had a total of 8 episodes. Mm-hmm. Which I think season one was also eight episodes. I don't remember. Um, I think I think it was also only uh, only eight episodes. I don't think it was that many. Um, yes, yeah, was, you are correct. Was, okay, so it was eight, eight. It was eight plus eight. So yeah. Um. All right. But anyway, uh, let's. So we have obviously the 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 returning characters. We have you know. Uh, we have the boys. We have you know Carl Urban as Billy Butcher and Jack Quaid as Huey Campbell, and uh, we got Frenchie and you know Mother's Milk and Kimiko. Um, we got Homelander. Uh, you know uh, Starlight, um, Queen Maeve, The Deep, A Train, Black Noir. So the seven, the boys. We have uh, Giancarlo as Mr. Edgar coming back and. And then we have um, uh, Ashley, you know, the the, the PR for Vought, uh, the PR lady from Vought um, and whatnot. Um, and I think we also have, like, what's her name? Uh, Becca, she's she's coming back from season one. A few other people. There's a few other people that come back from season one. Um, and then, so the thing that I want to talk about was the new characters. So... Let's go ahead and talk about the new characters. So obviously we know about the the, the ones the, the returning ones that I just mentioned, so, but let's talk about the new ones. So let's um, Aya Cash as Stormfront. She was a new character that was in all eight episodes of the season. Uh, we have uh, Sean Ashmore as Lamplighter, who some of you some people may recall as uh, Iceman from the X Men movies. That's who Sean. That's who he was. Uh, then we have. Uh, the the kid who played Ryan, he was he was also in this season uh, for the first time. Uh, we have Ruby, we have uh, Alistair, Adana, we have um, uh, what's her name, Cindy. Uh, we we had a few other characters. So of all of all the, the the newcomer characters, did you have like a favorite, or did you have like did you think anyone was in, you know partic- uh, good in particular? Or like anybody stand out or anything like that? Oh, I thought I thought Aya Cash was amazing as Stormfront. Yeah, same. She was. That's a hard character to have to portray, man. Yeah, you dude, know, Stormfront, especially like, in this day and age. Yeah, man, for real. I I thought she was fantastic as well. Aya Cash, you know, good job to you. Uh, um, I thought the kid work. was good too. Um, yeah, Cameron uh, Cameron yeah. Crovetti as as Ryan. Yeah, he was he was pretty yeah. good for for a kid actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, but yeah, dude, same for me, dude. Aya Cash as Stormfront was fucking phenomenal, man. Just yeah, she's great. From like just everything. Like when you when we first see her introduced in the in like the first episode, like of like fucking Instagramming every in, you know, Instagramming everything and like just like playing the just playing like all a bunch of different like like you see her being like uh the asshole Nazi piece of shit racist character. And then you see her being like, uh, like the, the feminist, uh, you know, girl power. We need pockets 
in our <laughs> like all the different angles that she was she was trying to do you know like that's it's pretty great man she she was she was pretty fantastic i i, I have to say she was by far she was by far the 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 biggest addition to season two but also the best she was she was really really good and then you definitely like it, it's always good when like an actor does such a good job that you fucking like hate the character you know what i mean like fuck yeah much. So yeah, she 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 killed it, man. She did a did a damn good job. So props to her for that. Absolutely, um, yeah, she was great. I mean, like from the beginning, you kind of suspect that she's not gonna be a great character because her name is Stormfront. And uh, for those of you who are unaware, Stormfront is the uh, I believe one of the first white nationalist, white supremacist, like Holocaust denial like neo-nazi forums or whatever on the internet you know what i mean oh, shit i didn't know that till just now <laughs> well there you go man it, yeah it's it's yeah it's it's a pretty uh pretty terrible website uh that was created in the 90s i believe um so there were some people i mean obviously there's people from the comics that knew that Stormfront was going to be a terrible character and then like mm-hmm. there's other people that you could just guess based off the name but I also know that like before the season started, I knew that the character of Stormfront was male in the comics, and they gender yeah. swap in the show to be a woman. Which I which here I'm gonna say that based off of my not I don't know I don't know the comics or anything for the boys. But just based off the knowledge for the show and how they did it, I think it was a good switch. Um because I like I like the the things that they did with the character um story wise. Um, with home with Homelander and then the other female, you know, soups and all that stuff. So yeah. I think I that... looked at the uh, the boys subreddit and uh-huh. uh, they have the comics and the they have two threads. They have a thread for the people that read the comics and watched the, the episodes, and mm-hmm. they had one for the people that just watched the episodes. Uh-huh. And I looked I looked in both of them, and most people said that was a really good swap that they did. That it's really good that they did it because it it yeah. added so much more to it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like, I always like when things stay like close to the to the original material, but kind of deviate for those people who, like, just for, who have read the comics or whatever, and 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 also just to keep things fresh, you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I I I, uh, I do like that they do that for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I I, I like I like the. I like Guy Cash in, in this role, and then you know, at the end, uh, well, actually, we'll, we'll we'll get to that later. But uh, yeah, what what do you uh, what do you want to talk about next? I just want to bring um, up the characters real quick because <clears throat> we could go anywhere. We could do like episode per episode, or we could do like just in general, like just talk about it and see where we go, you know, type deal. Um. Whatever works for me. I don't. I don't know. Um, what do you think? Uh, you want to do episode by episode, or you want to, or just talk about? Well, if you, if you guys haven't figured it out yet, we fucking love the season. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah, I, I, I did. I um, I um, I'm trying to decide if I like season one or two more because I honestly don't know, man. Season two, pretty, season two course. might be better because like. As most shows, season one is kind of like the setup and all that other stuff. And season two, you kind of you can get into the meat of things now, finally. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe season two I like more, but I don't know. I, I just I just love this show so far in general, like all of it. So I don't know. It's it's it, I, I I don't think I have a favorite. I just like them both equally. Um, but yeah. Uh yeah. Well, we can go episode by episode if you want, or, or right, just sure. in yeah, general. Sure, sure. We'll, we'll we'll just we'll do that. We'll do that to, just to keep things uh, pretty pretty easy. Yeah. All right. I was I was um uh, so, just to kind of start. Um, mm-hmm. I was I was like I was I was kind of like, how are we gonna how are we gonna start season two because of how season one ended? Right. I was like, how do you go? Ne- where do you go next? It's gonna get weird. Uh. Yeah. So yeah, uh, uh, you're gonna say something, and I cut you off. I apologize. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. I was just gonna say because, like, we still had the whole thing of like um, 
Oh, fuck the invisible dude's name. What was, what was his name? Uh, translucent. The, translucent. The guy they killed at the end of season one. Yeah, I'm like, well, they still haven't even confirmed that. Like, 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 like. Obviously, they knew, but like the world's like, like where the fuck is translucent? So they start off the season with a fucking funeral of like translucent mm-hmm. and shit, and yeah. And like they have like an empty fucking casket and shit. And you can see the inside, and they they have, <laughs> they have like pictures on the little slideshow or whatever of like a dude, like just clothes and like it's 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 fucking it's funny, man. It's funny as hell. Yeah. And then like at one point, like Starlight starts singing in like a super like cheesy voice, and like which by the way. Even though they're at a funeral, she she they're still making her wear that super skimpy outfit. Yeah, like, they're still <laughs> making her wear that stupid ass outfit. Yeah. Oh, uh, I was <laughs> like, they're really making her wear that here. Jesus. But, but she starts singing and she waves her hand because you know because like it's like waving a lighter or whatever, right? Yeah. She's oh like, my God. She has light in her hand and and that scene is so corny and whatever, but <laughs> but it's uh you know they do it they go for it and then you know Homelander keeps going on with his with his bullshit nonsense that he does um uh but yeah and then also like we see black noir well actually i think before that we see black noir just fuck shit up right yeah yeah i think that i think we open with black noir right like yeah yeah uh, yeah I'm pretty sure we do open with that i forgot about that actually yeah black noir just you see him like literally ripping dudes heads off and like fucking tearing dudes up and he's just fuck he's just he he murders boy. the shit out of uh yeah out of some folk um yeah out of like that that bad guy soup from season one uh yeah there's who like who i think most people thought was gonna remember. put up more of a fight but they just used them as not like, not he just yeah they, they he redshirted was, him. <laughs> he was just a tool for Black Noir's destruction, you know? Yeah, to be a badass. Yeah. Um, which, which I guess makes sense because he is a member of the Seven, like the top superheroes in the land. Yeah. And also because, like, we didn't get much of Black Noir in season one, and we definitely got more of him this season. Which yeah. Which is pretty cool to see, you know? Um,. And then, of course, you know, there's other stuff that happened in this first episode. Like, we see uh, the Deep making friends with the Church of the Collective or whatever the fuck. And oh, my God. That, that starts the season-long fresca bullshit and, you know, all that, <laughs> all that, all that you, crap. Would you like a fresca? Fuck fresca. No, that, that's later. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Eagle the Archer bails him out of jail, right? Because I think... The deep is like at a water park, and he's like, "Oh, you think this is funny, huh? You think the, you think the water is funny?" And he starts like fucking spraying kids with like a water gun or something. <laughs> like, you fucking idiot! What are you doing over here? So he gets arrested, gets put in the jail, and then yeah, Eagle the Archer uh, breaks him out and introduces him to this lady who, yeah, then like basically they like fucking brainwash him into joining the fucking church, the Church of the Collective or whatever the fuck they're called. Um. And yeah, um, Homelander is trying to recruit a new member of the Seven, which actually brings in the like the the bla- the Daredevil dude, like the deaf guy, you know. Mm-hmm. Bl- I think his name was Blindspot. So yes. Homelander, Homelander brings in Blindspot, or not Homelander. Ashley brings in Blindspot, and then Homelander just fucking like he kind of like goes along with it for a little bit. But then at the end, you're, you know, you know he's just, he's not gonna, he's not gonna accept this dude, and and of course he doesn't, because he's like, yo, you think I'm gonna accept a cripple in the seven? And he fucking like, before he before he even says that though, he like fucking like claps this dude's head, and he starts fucking like just falls to the floor. He starts bleeding from his ears and shit, and he fucking basically kills that man. Mm-hmm. And then like, oh, I'm pretty sure that he's dead. And then he <laughs> and he just terrifies the shit out of Ashley. And he basically tells her, like, yo, even though you're fucking where you're at now, you're going to be my eyes and ears at fucking Vought because I'm the one that makes the decisions around here and you're just going to be my puppet. So he, you know, he, he tells that to her and she goes on her way. And and yeah, I mean, 
that's we 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 also find out that the boys are kind of like um hidden away somewhere because they are um what's the word they're like being searched or hunted you know so yeah they're they're kind of like hidden away off into their own you know place um and like a drug drug dealing dealer gang banging neighbor hq kind of deal that's like hidden underground <laughs> right like that's where they're at yeah uh with some of frenchie's pals <laughs> frenchie's boys yeah yeah um yeah and then uh, i'm trying to remember what else happens um i think is it this episode when they talk to uh What's her face and her head gets popped off? Yeah, the CIA lady. Yeah, I think it's this episode, right? I mean, yeah, like, like the that's kind of like, I think it is because that's like what sets up the whole rest of the season, right? Like they're trying to somewhat figure out who the fuck popping heads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Starlight kind of kind of tries to help them out by like stealing some compound v from the from the vault lab because she talks to um the the homie who like can get like his limbs and dick chopped off and he can regrow yeah. it back or whatever oh she god what was his name guy. i fucking forgot his name because he wasn't even like the rest of the season so i'm like oh, i know fuck. he's only in that the one episode i forgot dude's name but you you guys know who i'm talking about the dude who's like, you can chop off my dick for whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, for, you know, and the other dude's like, oh, where's the closest ATM? Uh, that guy. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> that, that whole scene's funny because they set you up to be like, is he paying for sex? No, he's paying to chop off this dude's fucking arm and dick yeah. and shit. Yeah, it's, and then Starlight records it and whatnot because she uses it to blackmail him to get the compound V. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, so she gets a compound V from that dude. Meanwhile, the boys or you know Huey, they reach out to the CIA, and that's when they talk to the 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 director, right? The the director lady, who then gets her head popped like a melon, and then uh, yeah, they kind of find out that uh, they know that they're fucking talking to people. Um, mm-hmm. And then uh, finally, I think at some point, uh, they, I think the the seven are like filming something. I I forget if it's like a movie or a show or a commercial or whatever the hell they're doing. And then Stormfront walks in while she's like Instagram, like live recording the whole fucking thing. And she basically tells like Stormfront or uh, no, she basically tells Homelander and and the rest of them that oh I've, I'm the newest member of the Seven, and then Homelander's like the fuck what do you, what do you mean who 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 was the one that 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 did this and she's like oh uh, fucking Stan Edgar the, the the big boy the big man up top, and so Homelander's kind of a little pissed that he got undermined because you know earlier we see him talking to Ashley being like yo I'm be I'm gonna be the one who makes the choices and decisions around here. And then little does he know that, you know, Stan is still the, the, the big boy making the moves and whatnot. Um, and then basically at the end of the episode, that's basically it. And then we get Billy. Billy returns, right? He's like, he's like, daddy's home or whatever the fuck he says. And and then that's basically the episode, right? Unless I missed something. Yeah, I think so. It's been a while since I watched the first episode, so. <laughs> I think that's it. I, I think I, I, obviously I'm like skipping over things, but like. You know, because we got seven more episodes to talk about, but like I think that's the gist of it. Um, Give me one second, Daniel. I need to fix the audio glitch real quick. All right, we should begin um, now. Cool. We will talk about episode two now. Yeah. So, man, it felt like the season went by real quick. No, I'm just sitting here like looking at. Um, at the episodes, and I was like, it didn't seem like eight. It felt like fucking six. <laughs> it went by so fast. Yeah, yeah. So we'll talk about episode 
to okay let, let, let's 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 do that okay so billy billy butcher comes back right after mm-hmm. after like we were wondering after like season one where he was been because the way season one ended you're like yo oh yeah that's the thing the we didn't even talk about we spent yeah. the entire first episode not knowing what the fuck has happened to billy <laughs> yeah because the way season one ends you're like what the fuck is going on dude and like they even make like a reenactment of the thing with uh, fucking Chris Hansen or whatever the fuck, right? And he's like, "Oh, you're caught! I want to kill you!" Whatever. The yeah, fuck yeah, because they they framed Billy for Stillwell's yeah. murder. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So he Billy Butcher ends up in like some fucking Italian restaurant in like Indiana or something, and yeah. then uh, he like he goes up to the ladies like, "Give me you got some paper or something so you can write some some stuff down." And then, uh, yeah, he goes back to he tries to make his journey back to New York. Um, and um, yeah, Homelander uh, makes his way to Becca and Ryan, um, and we kind of see Homelander trying to, you know, get a little bit more involved in in, in Ryan's life and and whatnot. Um, and obviously Becca is just looking out for, for him, uh, you know, being, uh, being the good mom that she is. Um, and then of course we get to see more of the deep and the fucking church of the collective. And there's a weird ass scene where he sings with his gills. And, oh uh, my God. <laughs> dude. Every time that I see those gills, I get so grossed out, dude. Those things. Look yeah. Disgusting. Bro. Yeah. It's, it's definitely, not pleasant to look at. Uh, but yeah, they they get him drugged with like some mushrooms or some shit. He starts talking with his gills. It's fucking weird. He sings it's, with them. It's, it's, like, it's Patton Oswalt and they sing like, You are so beautiful. Oh my God. And it, it's like some crazy it's, ass shit but yeah, like, i laughed it's so bad but i laughed i'm like I just this is terrible <laughs> i just can't dude, every time i see those gills I'm, i just get grossed out dude let's see look awful bro <laughs> i just like Ugh, i don't want to see that man <laughs> and, and they I get move. it but like <laughs> and they move because they're talking it's fucking weird it's so weird man it's so weird but anyway <laughs> uh they do that and then uh Stormfront and Starlight kind of get put into this campaign. Uh, the the girls get it done type thing, or they you know kind of promote the female mm-hmm. soups, you know. Um, uh, because obviously Queen Maeve isn't there because she was like fuck. Because remember when Ashley gathered up the three of them, and then Queen Maeve was like, "I'm out of here" because she got a call or something. So it's just Stormlight and uh, Stormfront, or Stormfront and Starlight. My bad. Um. So yeah, they they meanwhile they're doing that. Uh, Billy is finding going trying to find Becca. Um. And then, uh, Queen Maeve is going to visit her, uh, her ex at the hospital, which is why she left, because she got the call for that. Um. And then she explains why she's been so secretive, and we kind of get into the, the the story of Queen Maeve, and you know, and uh, and that kind of thing. And she explains that like she's not ashamed of being queer, but like she's worried. She's worried about Homelander. She's scared of Homelander, basically. And uh, you know, because we all know how Homelander is, and what you know, what he can do, and all that kind of stuff. And then, uh, meanwhile, that's going on. During the whole girls get it done thing, uh, with Stormfront and the Starlight, fucking A Train makes his reappearance in the middle of all that stuff, and then uh, Starlight's kind of like, "Oh shit, it's A Train!" Because the last time we saw them, they were fighting at the end of season one, uh, while Huey was there as well. So he kind of knows things about her, but she knows things about him. Uh, mm-hmm. and then, and then the, the dude brings Starlight the sample of the compound V 
but she has nowhere to hide it because of her shitty costume. Uh, <laughs> and you can practically see Starlight's uterus. That line was used in this yep, episode. <laughs> yep, that's where yes, Stormfront talks about the you know the lack of pockets on their costumes and and all that stuff. Um, and then uh, the boys are going to Jersey because they're trying to follow the information from the CIA uh, where Kimiko like starts ripping dudes heads off and shit. Dude, Kimiko is a fucking savage, bro. She like straight up murders these people. I'm like, God damn. She fucks these people up, dude. Like she like peels the skin off dudes faces and rips heads oh off. Oh my God. Yeah. That was hard to watch. I was like, holy shit. Kimiko she ripped his face God off. Damn savage. She literally ripped his face off. Okay. This wasn't Travolta and fucking Nicolas Cage face off. This was, she grabbed his face and ripped it the fuck off. <laughs> Oh, yeah, my, no, it was, it's, it's the most brutal it, thing I think I've seen on TV there's, in a there's while. There's one thing this show does well. It's the fucking brutality, bro. They do it. It's like props, some Mortal Kombat shit. Props to their like effects teams because that is some serious shit right there, man. Um, but anyway, um, where were we? Uh. They find Kimiko's brother, I believe. Um, and then Starlight and Stormfront kind of have a uh, kind of have a talk where Starlight or, or uh, Starlight kind of reveals that she wants to take down, uh, you know, Vought in her own way. Um, um, and Stormfront is kind of like, eh, you know, she kind of like isn't really, kind of isn't really with it. But uh, but anyway, A Train kind of finds out that she has the Compound V. She she tries to like, you know, like, you know, sell. Uh, what's the word? He kind of like, he he knows she has it, so they're kind of like fighting over that. Um, and then she blackmails him with the knowledge of you know, that he killed his ex-girlfriend and and all that kind of stuff. Um, so she kind of wins back the upper hand. Um, and then uh, Kimiko and her brother kind of have a little bit of a, of a fight where she kind of subdues him. And uh, I think it ends with Butcher and Huey talking about like, I think Butcher says, like, if you ever, if you, he's, he says something along the lines of, like, if you ever get involved with me, you know, with, or like, if you ever, like, get in the way of me trying to find my wife or something like that, he's like, I'm gonna kill you or something, right? So, and he, like, punches him in the face or whatever. So that's kind of where episode two ends. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we start off episode three with, um, with some 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 Billy Joel, um, because Huey loves Billy Joel, man. That's the kind of stuff he grew up on, um, and yeah, Huey is just kind of like vibing, listening to some music, and uh, Butcher, uh, kind of apologizes to to Huey for for ba- abandoning him and the rest of the crew. Um, and then I think uh, Huey's response is just punching Billy back in the face. Cause he did that to him the last episode. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I tried, but I think I would punch him too. Like yeah, he's, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's decked him pretty hard. So. Yeah. Um, but then Billy is still just locked in and, 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 on, he's locked in on trying to find Becca, right? So he's like, he makes like, he's always like trying to make like, like deals and moves and shit. Like, you know, like he promises the CIA that he'll kill Kimiko, like if she isn't happy with, with, uh, you know, taking down her brother, who, you know, uh, is obviously a, a considered a soup terrorist at this point, her brother, 
Um, and then, uh, of course, Homelander is still back over there with uh, Ryan and Becca. Um, and he's just trying to, like, unleash Ryan's superpowers. Because he knows that Ryan is his son, and he's trying to just get him to do some stuff. So he kind of like pushes him off the roof, and then Becca comes in like, "The fuck are you doing?" He's like, "He's," but home. I was like, "He's my son. He can fly. You know, he's got powers and stuff." <laughs> and he gets mad, and and then like him, Homelander and Becca are kind of having that little back and forth, like you know, argument. And then uh, Ryan like gets a little pissed off and he pushes Homelander down to the ground. And then Homelander is like, that's my boy, basically, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then mean, and then uh, over at Vought, Ashley is trying to come up, is trying to like live her best PR life by trying to make an Avengers style or Justice League style movie for this, the set, um, uh, the seven which I believe was called Dawn of the Seven. <laughs> and then uh, the movie was interrupted by news that, uh, you know, by, by Compound V, basically, that it's, you know, everybody knows about it now at this point, uh, I think, is what happens. Um, and then Starlight and A-Train continue to talk about stuff. And, and then... Uh, and then there's like, and then like Black Noir, Queen Maeve, and the Deep all like, they kind of are like, well, damn, I wasn't born like this. I was kind of like, you know, we were we were made this, and they, they kind of like ponder like what life would be like if they were normal. Um. Uh, and then Huey kind of talks to the other boys, and Mother's Milk and Frenchie are like, oh my god, you did this basically, and he's like, yeah, I did, uh, even though it was basically starlight the one that did it right so um but but butcher is still kind of unimpressed with what he did um and then meanwhile we kind of have like this this budding relationship between or trying or frenchy tries to have a relationship with uh with uh kimiko's brother uh because he he asks i believe frenchy asks the brother if he can teach him the secret sign language that he and Kimiko created when they were kids. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, he doesn't help them. And there's something that happens where I think Kimiko's brother can like grab a, like he can like pull over a can of like soda or something. And he like manages to escape that way. Um, and then they're on the boat at this point in the ocean. And f I believe Kenji, the brother of Kimiko at this point is wanting to escape. So he kind of has a little bit of a, of a, of a brawl with, uh, with, with the boys, but they accidentally knock down a helicopter that's on, you know, like following the boys. Yeah, they're after the boat, you know, my big wet dream. Yeah, my big wet <laughs> dream is what it's called. That's right. <laughs> um, so basically, yeah. And then, like, back over in the Vought side of things, Edgar is like, you know, he, you, they're talking about the, you know, the company's shares and whatnot after the Compound V revelation and whatnot. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's chance of like fuck Vod and Homelander is trying to turn the seven against Vod. And, you know, he's like, Oh, we should be the ones that are, you know, um, like, I, I don't know. Basically he tries to turn the seven against Vod and, and them, you know, um, and, um, and then of course we see that, the deep is trying to get back onto the, the the whole thing. The whole point is like the deep is trying to get back onto the seven, right? This entire season. So at this point, what he does is um, he sees that. Um, well, he doesn't see, but I think he got like tipped that the boys were on the run. 
So he he chases after him with dolphins and then a big ass whale. Um, which he, the deep thinks he has the upper hand when he lands the whale on the beach. Oh but man, he strikes boys, a pose. That's for sure. He's posing. Boy, yeah, he strikes a pose, thinking like, "Yeah, all right, I I did this. I'm gonna capture these guys or whatever, or I'm gonna, or am I at least gonna subdue them or stop them?" And then the boys being or butcher, you know. The boys being the boys, they 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 fucking ride their boat straight into the fucking whale and oh my god, it was there's, nasty. There's, there's blubber nuggets for all. Um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> poor Huey. Right into that, right into that fucker. Um, Huey's just like, I'm gonna stay here. But the boys kind of hide away into like a storm drain type thing. But the seven are like kind of trailing them because they all arrive too at that point. Um, and then we see like Star- Starlight and Huey kind of talk, and then Huey's like, "Oh, it's just it's you, Starlight." And then Starlight is kind of like, because everyone else is there, she kind of has to like play along with it, but he doesn't know that. So then St- Homeland is like, "Yo, Storm or Starlight, you got you got to kill this dude. You have to like basically kind of like approve your loyalty kind of thing, because mm-hmm. he knows that they were a thing before." So uh, so yeah, there's kind of that thing. And then, um, and then, yeah, I mean, they, they kind of bring in, uh, uh, Kenji to, um, like get a Homelander out of the way. He kind of like pushed, I forget what he does, but he kind of like, he like sends his ass below the ground or some shit. I forget how he, like, he, like he grabs like a train or something and like yanks yeah, yeah, it yeah, down. Yeah. Yeah, like a bus or a train or anything. Like fucking sends his ass fucking to the center of the earth. Like or fucking Billy's like, oh, I can't eat this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then Kenji just fucking sends his ass out of there. Yeah. Um, but then they kind of they kind of escape. And then a bit later, we see that Stormfront finds um, Stormfront finds Kenji. And, um, and Kimiko, um, and she kind of tortures them and like beats them up a little bit. And then this is the the revelation here for everyone. If they didn't already know that Stormfront is a racist Mm -hmm. because she kit on her way to kill, um, because not only does she kill Kenji, but she uses like she she uses a race like she she uses a slur like a racial slur to mm-hmm. him when she kills him. And then you kind of and then before that you see what a psycho she is too. By like yeah, just, she murders like she kills like an, a, a, an innocent black family who are just mm-hmm. like chilling in their you know home and, she and then like she's out the like, window. She's like walking up the stairs. She sees a random black guy and like sends his ass out the window and and then like. And then, like when she's killing Kenji, she's like, "Oh, look at me! I want to see, I want to see the light in your eyes go away or some shit, right?" Yeah, go out, like the, like, the light go out. Yeah, and then like, yeah, and then she fucking calls Kenji a, you know, uh, something you don't call somebody, and then uh, she like snaps his fucking arms and and wrists and shit, and he, 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 she kills his ass, you know. She's very sadistic. Like she just br- like breaks his like. His wrists. She like breaks his hands like back off his wrists. It's like very painful. Yeah. And that's basically the way episode three ends. Yeah. She. Yeah. Yeah. And they start treating her like a hero. Yeah. She 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 she, she kind of is yeah the hero instead of the murderer. She is. Uh... Um. And then of course like. There's like a bunch of in the next episode, episode four. There's like a bunch of deaths that happen, and you know, there's like they're being blamed on Kimiko's brother uh, Kenji, basically. Yeah. Um. And then, uh, oh my God, this is the episode yeah. where uh, where Homelander is like <laughs> fucking talking to Stillwell, and you're like, wait a minute, how is this happening? This is, this has to be a flashback, right? Because like, it's like she's supposed to be dead, yeah. And then we find out that it's not a flashback. It's the dude that can uh, the doppelganger. doppelganger. Yeah, yeah, doppelganger, and he just fucking like switches up to like to being uh, Stillwell, and you're like, that's fucking terrible or disgusting, but uh, whatever. Uh, 
but yeah, um, so the boys meet this woman, this elderly, uh, this elderly woman who reveals to them that Stormfront was the old hero known as Liberty. Um, So I think that Billy, uh, like Billy, obviously is still concentrated one hundred percent on finding Becca, but also Mother's Milk and Huey are gonna continue to find the Trail of Liberty, uh, and then Starlight is like being interrogated by Homelander in like in the elevator of like of the. Uh, of the tower, right? You remember that when when mm-hmm. he's like, uh, he like he takes his glove like, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. When, when that happens, yeah. you know, he kind of like chokes her out and like you know threatens her and whatnot. Um, but then she ends up leaving and and she 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 convinces him that she's you know that she's being honest in what she's saying and she and she joins up with uh, Mother's Milk and uh, and Huey and uh, they head for North Carolina in search of liberty. Um, and then, um, uh, Frenchie tries to kiss Kimiko, uh, who basically, that kind of doesn't end well, uh, and he ends up going back to, like, his ex or something, and then, uh... Yeah, like, like, Frenchie's, like, drugged up, right, at yeah. this point? Yeah, yeah, he goes back to his ex, and, like... She gives him some solid. They, they, there's like some advice thrown between the shared between the two of them or whatever. Um, and then we have a cool moment of bonding between Mother's Milk and Starlight, talking about donuts and memories of their fathers and stuff. You know, because mm-hmm. so we, we get some we get some MM backstory. We almost never get MM yeah. backstory. Like... With his uh, with his, with his dad, how about how, he, how they would go and he'd try like every free flavor, every free sample flavor, and they'd like have mm-hmm. to wait in line forever, but. But he's like, I'd give anything to fucking do all that again because I, you know, he misses his pops and whatnot. Yeah. Um. But uh. Yeah, and then Huey and Starlight end up banging in the hotel or whatever in the <laughs> motel, and uh. <laughs> and then uh, Billy finally finds Becca, and they have some words, but then. You know, Billy kind of, or Billy Butcher tells her that, like, you know, he kind of wants, he wants to, like, take her away, but he doesn't want anything to do with, like, the kid, you know? Um, but, but anyway, yeah, that that happens. And then, meanwhile, on TV, Homelander kind of does Queen Maeve dirty by, uh, by outing her as being like a um as being like gay or or bi or whatever right because like nobody knew at that point because they're kind of the the interviewer is kind of like hounding homelander like oh why is why are all the heroes white and why you know why is this why is that or whatever and he's like oh well we were we have a we have a gay soup and we have this and that and he kind of he outs me (laughs) the black noir line is pretty funny to me we have black noir he doesn't identify as any color or race or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, made me laugh. Because uh, he's or in that fucking jumpsuit. You can't tell anything. Yeah. And then Stormfront has like an army of memers making all these like stupid memes and shit. And uh, yeah. Kimiko tries to go attack Stormfront at the at the rally, but Frenchie kind of stops her. Um and then, uh, yeah, I mean, she kind of Stormfront and Homelander kind of have like a uh, like a conversation about like because Stormfront, I think at this point is or not Stormfront, Homelander at this point is kind of losing like hero. What were they, what did they call them? Like the points or whatever? Yeah, some sort of like I guess it's kind of like stock. Yeah, he's, he's kind of losing points, and like he's he kind of like gets help from Stormfront. Um, um, 
but yeah, so he they kind of talk about that stuff and um yeah, Becker refuses to leave with Billy because he doesn't care about Ryan. He only wants her. Uh and the Church of the Collective is trying to get a wife for the deep. So they're oh kind of doing, like, yeah, they're doing they, interviews all throughout this episode, yeah, and it's doing, like, so the, weird. They've been doing all these like dating interviews the entire episode because like, oh, you don't realize what it's for the entire time. I'm like, what the fuck is this? When the, when the, when it opened, the episode opens with one, and I'm like, did I start to write show? Like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Um, and yeah, then we go back to the home, we Homelander and Doppelganger where at, this is where the episode ends, but they kind of like, he goes back to Stillwell and then he Homelander kind of gets pissed and he like Doppelganger tries to switch into Homelander himself and Homelander kind of, he kills Doppelganger and he like, he kind of like, it's kind of like a way of like him letting go a part of himself kind of, if you think about it that mm-hmm. way, you know? Um, by killing doppelganger, which looked like him. Um, but yeah, it was, it was pretty bizarre seeing that. But anyway, that episode, that episode ends with that. Um, and, uh, yeah. So moving on, um, episode five, um, so this episode, I think begins with queen Maeve, um, making like a i think she's in the she's filming like a movie and then they kind of like have her say that like she's gay or something in it after she got ousted for my yeah. home um and like she's about to kiss like uh, the 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 other actress and then like they kind of stop it before it happens um but yeah and then uh Homelander kind of gets there's like a video of Homelander destroying like an African village and then like uh you know people start not people start to like not they're not happy obviously because because of that um uh on the set of the seven movie Starlight uh is trying to hide that she knows Stormfront is Liberty. Um, but also um, the deep is doing the whole interview um, about his like, he's, he does like the TV interview with Katie Couric uh, about like, you know, the whole corny, like, uh, she always says that because I bring her breakfast in bed or whatever the fuck, you know, the whole, <laughs> the whole, like the newly arranged marriage type thing. Um, uh, and then Billy, uh, well, Huey and mother's milk follow Billy to, I believe his, his, is that his aunt or who is that? The, the, the lady that we see with, uh, with, with, with butcher. Oh, I think it's his aunt, right? I think yeah, it I think, is. I thought it was his aunt. Yeah, um, I, maybe. But anyway, the whole point is they're in there. They're trapped in the house because Black Noir is sitting on the roof waiting for them to come out so that you can kill him or fight him or whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like, back on the set of the movie, we have Starlight. Uh, approaching her mother and stormfront talking about her business and star starlight gets gets pissed off because her mom is just talking to fucking stormfront about you know about her ball about all her business basically like look why are you talking to this stranger she's like yo she's not a stranger she's your co-worker your, your teammate or whatever the fuck she says fucking shit that's still a stranger <laughs> yeah um and then like Ashley and the other marketing people at Vought come up with like the most awful thing of like trying to market their new gay superhero. So they kind of force Elena and Maeve 
into like roles like these like weird at like oh you're gonna wear this and you're gonna wear that or whatever um and then elena is like i'm out of here Maeve kind of tells her that they have to take down uh, Homelander and that they will and whatnot. And um, the deep uh, has a commercial for the church of the collective. And it's like, there's like at one point, there's like a dude who's like roughing up a girl. And he's like, he's like, that's not cool, dude. Or something like that. And it's so corny and like stupid. Oh and, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's that commercial. And then, um, yeah, and then like A Train is filming his 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 scenes in the movie where they're like making him like leave the Severn or whatever, and uh, he's like, "Oh no, I want to leave it more open ended, you know." So you kind of is he is he gone or is he not? And then the director's like, "No, nah, we're just gonna go with what's on the script and uh, all that stuff." Um, there's a huge protest. Homelander shows up. Um, and I think this is where, um, this is where he kind of, um, like we think he like kills everybody, but doesn't right. Yeah. Yeah. He like lasers the crowd, which by the way, <laughs> that was, that was crazy. I'm, like, I I'm, was like, Whoa, we're going here. Shit. Yeah, dude, dude, shit would have hit the fan if that would have happened like real quick. And then it turns out to be the biggest fake out ever. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was it was that was such a good fake out though, dude. Because it like, was so wow. perfect. Yeah, it was nuts. Um, there's a there's a look on his face at one point when he's lasering people, but he looks sad. It's like you know, there's like a point where he like stops. And it's like it almost looks like he's gonna cry for a second. Dude, Anthony Starr is so good as a. Uh, oh movie. my god, the dude's yeah. off the charts. He's yeah, amazing. Fantastic. Um. <laughs> But uh but yeah, um so Black Noir is over there fighting with uh Butcher and uh uh Huey and Mother's Milk. And then uh Stan Edgar calls because he heard something that Billy or Butcher said and uh, he, he basically calls off Noir because they kind of they're making a deal, right? Uh safety in exchange for his silence. Um uh, Starlight is kind of like uh, in danger because she knows, or because Stormfront knows that she's the one that leaked the compound, you know, the compound five news, or the compound five, compound V. I read, I read the V as I'm like <laughs> a uh, Roman numeral. <laughs> yeah, the Roman numeral. Uh, I, sorry about that. Uh, it's fun. Um, but Starlight kind of retaliates. She's like. Uh, if you do that, then I'll tell everyone that you were fucking the racist hero Liberty. Um, so Starlight kind of has a plan for like a trains, a, a trains like, yo, I'm going to do this. If you're going to do that, she's like, well, I'm going to do this. And then storm Stormfront comes in doing the same thing. You're going to do that. Well, I'm going to do this. So, so Stormfront Stormfront or uh, Starlight, uh, you know, she's, she's, she's good, man. She, she, she can, she can uh, protect herself um, in that way. Um, uh and then yeah i think that uh this is where starlight or stormfront i keep confusing starlight and stormfront but stormfront and and uh what's his name uh, homelander uh they kind of i think this is where stuff starts happening for them um and then uh, on to episode six. Uh, we start off with. Um, uh, Frenchie, this Frenchie's backstory, we kind of like uh, we kind of see him and his friends from from years ago. Um, Robin, you know, they 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 kind of want to rob banks and stuff. And and then uh, he kind of he kind of like he takes the implant the vault implant out of starlight so they can't so that homelander and stormfront can't track her um and then uh yeah those two are out there killing like just killing random people because why not um 
And then this is where Starlight and the boys go to the uh, mental uh, facility that was owned by Vought. Um, we kind of discover that this is the place where they have like all these soups trapped in. Um, and um, I think the deep visits he visits Queen Maeve and they kind of have a talk about like trying to get him back into the crew and whatnot. Um, and then she kind of asks him, she kind of asks the deep to go look for the black box of the crash plane from season one. Um, and then he offers to help a train by telling him to join the church of the collective as well. Um, and then, um, back at the, uh, the mental facility, uh, Frenchie spots lamplighter and they kind of lock eyes and they kind of like want to fight each other. But then, uh, Stormfront gets there and they have to like bust everybody out. So all the, all the soups are out, you know, doing their own thing. And we see a little bit, we see a little bit more of Frenchie's backstory and, uh, we see, you know, mother's milk proposing to his wife. And then we see kind of the backstory of how lamplighter got involved with the boys. Um, and how lamplighter didn't mean to kill the kids, but you know, it's, still happened and we get the backstory of that kind of stuff um and um basically back at the uh at the mental uh facility um we have um stormfront looking for lamplighter and he doesn't he doesn't uh out the, the boys because they're there with him and he kind of just responds to her um, by letting uh, by letting them, uh, you know, like let, letting them go, whatever, basically. And uh, Maeve is with Elena. Uh, and, you know, she tells her that she's going to use the, the leverage of the footage of the plane against uh or as leverage against homelander and uh you know stormfront tells homelander about her age about liberty about her being a nazi and how old she is and how she has a daughter and all this other stuff the the big the, you know she reveals you know and she basically tells homelander that he can be the new aryan uh you know, the leader of the Aryan super army or whatever. Uh, to protect the the white race. Uh, and, uh, you know, Homelander, you know, buys into the race's bullshit. And then we move into the last two episodes of the season. Uh, so. We kind of. Um. Uh, where do we start off episode seven that we start off with? I think this it's, is um, the, it's this is the episode where we we are following the point of view of that dude, right? Um, while they're talking about how there could be super villains among us type of deal. I think, right? Isn't that where this episode opens? And it all ends with we see him every day talking to his mom, having breakfast. And then finally, Ooh, he's like in the yeah, convenience yeah, store. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he kills the yeah. dude. Yeah, that's he right. kills that guy. He's like, didn't your eyes just light up or flicker or something like that? Are you one of them? Are you super villain? And he fucking pops him in the head. And that's how we get started. Yeah. I believe that. I just remember that because it was like, oh, we're following another not main character person doing something. <laughs> And then we got like Lamplighter and Huey watching the seven porn parodies and whatnot. Oh my goodness. You want to watch Deep Does It in the Blowhole? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's... I don't know why that one stuck with me. It's just so funny and ridiculous. Yeah. 
yeah, that that one, the, they're they're pretty they're pretty funny. I have to say, yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, um, they kind of put Starlight into a Vought jail where she can't use her powers and stuff. Um, Huey and Lamplighter kind of have a little discussion while they're watching the porn. They're like, "Do you want to be the?" You want to be the cuck or the guy who fucks the wife, and the, you know they they kind of kind of go over that, which you know inspires Lamplighter to you know make you know fucking get out there and, and do the damn thing. Um, and then Homelander and Stormfront are out there, you know, running like Nazi rallies and shit, and and then uh, she's uh, they go and visit. Ryan and Becca. Cause at this point, Homelander and uh and Stormfront want to be more involved with Ryan. And mm-hmm. uh and they kind of kidnap him from Becca there. They like fly off with, with, with Ryan. Um And then we have, I think, Mother's Milk and Grace visiting Jonah Vogelbaum, which is the ex, uh, the ex uh, CEO of or, or CSO of of Vought. Um, and. Um, Kimiko begins to teach Frenchie the, the, the sign language that she had with her brother. Uh, Maeve is kind of up, you know, pretty broken hearted with her, you know, with Elena leaving her. And now she's like in bed with a random dude. Um, the deep and a train celebrate the church of the collective leader's birthday. Uh, but, but he's forced to, uh, to like call Eagle <laughs> the archer like a toxic person or whatever the fuck I think. Yeah. Who has spoken negatively of the church. Um and then Homelander basically just wants to be a dad, so he kind of like asks Becca to have, you know, Ryan be a part of his life, basically. Uh And then, uh, meanwhile, Lamplighter and Huey are breaking into Vought. Uh, and then this is where Lamplighter kills himself. Uh, and then that kind of just leaves Huey alone to do, you know, to break out Starlight. Um, I wanted to do it in front of my statue. Yeah, he kills himself in front of his old statue. It's uh, funny, too, because it felt like they were kind of setting him up to do a redemption arc mm-hmm. and that totally doesn't happen nope. and i actually know what happens the lamplighter in the comic books and let me tell you it is way different than what happens in the show interesting and fucking it's a lot i like what they did in the show a lot because i because i don't know what he does i don't know what happens to him in the comics so I it, it's it's kind of fucking dumb <laughs> <laughs> what they did in the show is way better trust me uh, but uh, yeah, so Starlight escapes because of the, the sprinkler system fucks with the electricity. Uh, but she almost, she almost, she gets pretty beat up by Black Noir. But Queen Maeve comes in and fucks with Black Noir with his nut allergy. She brings in an <laughs> almond joy. She hits him with an almond joy, which I had the other day. <laughs> and uh, they use Lamplighter's hand to escape. Uh, I need his fucking head. Yeah, his chop, fucking head. <laughs> and then this is where uh, I think they're all testifying at the uh, at the end of the episode, testifying at the uh, hearing. At the hearing, uh, yeah. And Senate, then, Senate and then, uh, and then everybody gets their heads popped. Yeah, people start that's getting kinda, their heads popped. That's kind of where the episode ends. As we Which is headed- in- interesting to watch that scene after you know what happens yeah. at the end. Yeah, because you're like, the <laughs> fuck? Yeah, so we head into the finale. And uh, 
yeah. Uh, let's see. We start off this final episode. Uh, um, the boys uh, decide to go after the soups uh, with like RPGs and all kinds of weapons and shit. Um, but Becca turns up uh, begging Butcher to save Ryan from Homelander and Stormfront. Uh, Stormfront or Starlight and Huey try to convince Maeve to help him out, but she kind of like ha- doesn't really want to do that, you know, testifying and that kind of deal. Um, and then there's a nice little moment where where uh, Huey, where, where Star- Starlight finally is like, "Why the hell do you listen to so much damn Billy Joel?" And then he tells her that, yo, this is the music I used to grow up with. And, you know, that's that's kind of, you know, it, get a little bit of more backstory from him on that. Um, and uh, the Church of the Collective kind of, you know, talks with Stan Edgar and they kind of help get, uh, they want to get the deep uh, into the seven. Uh and then A Train kind of as well. Uh, then A Train kind of overhears something, and he like, because they're talking about Stormfront, and they're like, "Oh, she's a fucking racist, you know, who hates you know black people, and, and you know she's this and that, and she's a Nazi and whatnot." So A Train kind of overhears this conversation, and he like grabs the file. He like snatches her files from the from the vault, and then gives them off uh, to Huey and Starlight. Um, and uh, meanwhile, the boys are trying to come up with their plan to get, you know, uh, Ryan and, and all this other stuff, you know, happening all at once. Because Ryan is at Vought Tower. Uh, meanwhile, they're out for, like, food or something, I think it is. Uh, it's it's Ryan, Stormfront, and Homelander, and then like Homelander and Stormfront start getting like crowded with um with like fans and shit. They want like photograph or like they want like pictures and autographs and all kinds of stuff. And Ryan's freaking out because he's a kid who's never experienced this before. Right? He's always he's always been locked up, so he's not used to being around so many people. So he kind of like starts freaking out and shit. And uh, you know, Homelander just takes him out of there. Uh, so while Homelander starts bonding with Ryan, uh, meanwhile Butcher is over there with Edgar to make a deal to hand in Ryan so that he can have Becca alone. Um, and again, there's just a continued thing of of Butcher making deals, wheeling and dealing, uh. And then they kind of leak the folder of Stormfront's past. And like while Homefront, Storm, uh, or Homefront, Jesus, I'm confusing the names now, dude. I'm like saying these names so much, I'm confusing them. Homelander and Stormfront and Ryan are all like at the cavern or whatever the fuck, wherever they are in the woods. Uh, it gets leaked. Stormfront gets pissed. She flies off away to see, you know, what happened. And, uh, we kind of see that the boys and Vought have their plan. They set it into motion. They have their electric or, or super sound wave thing that they're going to fuck with, uh, with, uh, Homelander. And, uh, Becca and Butcher kind of have a conversation being like, I had this, you know, I had this plan that I was going to turn in, uh, you know, Ryan and like, I, yeah, I couldn't do it and whatnot. And they kind of, he, he tells mother's milk to take Becca and Ryan out of there. Uh, this is all like, and, and then, and then they obviously they go in with, with the sound wave stuff and they, while home, home, Homelander, Takes the bait. Becca and Butcher go get Ryan. Uh, and then Stormfront returns, and she's not happy, so she kind of sends 
the car they're escaping with off to the side. Um, and then they kind of home front. Home front, Jesus Christ. Stormfront. I'm, dude, Daniel, I'm, I'm, Daniel is on that ship, man. He's on that home front ship. <laughs> I, I am just like, it just, there's a game called Home Front 2. So. Yeah, no. I've I'm played like, it. In the face. Anyway, Stormfront starts fighting with Kimiko and Starlight. And then out of nowhere, they're like beating up on her, and then like you know stuff. Then like Queen Maeve comes in, and they beat hey, her crowd. up, and they just beat that. Let me tell yeah. you, it is one of the most satisfying moments I've ever seen on television to watch her watch those girls beat the living fuck out of that Nazi. Girls, Let girls me. Good time, <laughs> it was so satisfying when when Maeve. Uh, Comes up behind her and says, "Hey, Kraut," and just fucking hits her with a right. That would make Tyson proud. And they just kicked the living shit out of Stormfront. And I didn't feel bad at all. In fact, I felt quite good about it happening. <laughs> they, were, they were fucking her up. So anyway, <laughs> they do that, and then Stormfront leaves, and she catches up with uh, with Butcher, Becca, and Ryan, who've managed to escape. And then Stormfront walks up to Becca. He like she tries to choke her out, but I think well she still does that. But before she does that, uh, Becca stabs Stormfront in the eye with a knife, which was graphic AF. Fucking she, just shanks yeah. her. Yeah, and then yeah, so things are looking bad because Butcher can't do shit against Stormfront. Stormfront is just choking out Becca, but then Ryan finally gets pissed. And he just blasts the shit out of Stormfront. He he basically Ryan's he Vadered Stormfront. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he turned her into Vader on Mustafar. Extra crispy, burnt. Uh, she's like looking like yeah, like Vader on on Mustafar with no legs, no arms, all burnt up, no hair. Talking in, she's got her talking in German and shit, and. Uh, Homelander arrives, and uh, he's like, "Yo, did you do this?" And uh, he's like, uh, "Yeah." And Homelander basically tries to get Ryan to come with him, and they do that. But he he doesn't. He's like, "Nah." He goes over. He's, he goes over with Butcher, and he stands with Butcher, and then they see that uh, Becca is like, you know, she unfortunately was a was a casualty of war. Uh, Cause she got hit by Ryan's attack, the Stormfront, and then uh, as Homelander's about to like kill Butcher and whatnot, Queen Maeve arrives. He's like, "Yo, stop!" Because I got this right here, and she and she shows him the footage of the of the airplane uh, as she's gonna use to like you know blackmail him and whatnot. And he's like, "Yo, if you do that, I'm gonna kill everyone and destroy everything and all that stuff." And she's like, "Well, fine, as long as everybody knows what kind of a monster you are." Um, but uh, yeah. So then they all leave because of Queen Maeve coming in to to save the day. Um, and then yeah, Vought kind of does the whole one bad apple thing with like Stormfront was the one that was you know oh well let's let's say sorry to Starlight and Stormfront was the only one that was the cause of this. So they kind of leave it at that. A train joins the group again. The deep is just pissed off because the church was bullshit, and he's like, "Fuck Fresca and fuck you," and you know, A train got accepted again, but not him. And uh, Huey and Starlight are together. Uh, Billy or Butcher uh, sends Ryan over to Grace uh, after she offered him like a job of, you know, becoming an official member of her black ops soup team. Uh, Mother's milk is back with his fam. Uh, Kimiko and Frenchie are together. Uh, And then the, you know, Victoria, the head popping lady kills the church of the collective dude as she pops his head off. And then we get to see that it's her. And uh, yeah, so we kind of we kind of have that reveal, 
and um yeah so am i uh, what am i missing is that is that kind of a good recap to end it all i, I kind of i think that's pretty much it um I've done so much talking. We, we can't, we can't like do it, like all the little stuff. You know, we can't the major. Oh hell no, nah, dude! Hell no, nah, hell no. Nah, uh, nah. But that's pretty uh, much it, right there. Yeah. Uh, overall, so overall, good season. Great season. Had a lot of fun with it. Um, yeah, I, 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 I really enjoyed it. Um, looking forward to season three. Um, very curious to see what what you know, characters and things are going to be in the new show. Like I know Jeffrey Dean Morgan is going to be in the next season and, mm-hmm. and uh, the dude from supernatural, I forget his name, but uh, he's something, uh, something Eccles, Jason. Yeah. J- Jensen Eccles or whatever. Jensen, yeah, Jensen he's Eccles, be in it. So that's going to be good, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. It's going to be interesting too, because we still have like, we still got the head pop and mystery technically like that's not solved yeah. uh, i mean we know we know who did it but the boys don't know yeah who they did know it. yeah then, like, um, huey, huey is now like working over there too and everything so it's like damn yeah right. we'll so see, we'll see how this goes yeah. yeah uh the only sad thing about it is we're probably not gonna see it for a while because of covid and all that stuff yep. and all that yep. got pushed so yep yep yep, 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 uh, yep. so that's a bummer uh, but I, I absolutely love this show. Um, Same. Uh, and uh, God, some crazy shit just happens in it. That's that's funny. Just so funny and satisfying. It is. It is Watching a great st- show. Like I, I can't it. say it enough. I was so satisfied when they kicked the shit out of Stormfront. I mean, the girls just beating it's, the. <laughs> so many it's great like, moments. It's like Wolfenstein. And you're playing as B.J. Blazkowicz, and you're fucking just killing Nazis. It's so satisfying. You don't feel bad <laughs> at all. <laughs> Pretty um, uh, Yeah, looking forward to more. I, I don't think there was like a, a bad episode even. I think everything was good the whole way through. Yeah, I love, that's, I love both seasons. It's just a great show. I love... I both like and dislike that they're only eight episodes because I kind of want more. Like I want like ten episodes per season, you know. Mm-hmm. But like I, li- but I do like that there's no like filler or no, no like like we said, there's no bad no no bad episode, right? Mm-hmm. And you, you can't like if there was more episodes per season, there probably would be some bad episodes. But since there's only eight, they they're all good, you know. So I do I do like that. Um, but yeah, I feel like the I feel like the deep's just gonna get knocked down each season. Like he's gonna try to come back every season, and they're just gonna Dude, kick him in I the just, nuts. I just don't want to see those. I just don't want to see those gills, man. Like keep that shit away, bro. I'm, I thought, like, oh, they're gonna they're probably gonna let him back in, right? Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see what they do with that next time. But uh, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, shit, shit, shit'll probably get even crazier. Yeah, but uh, um, that was that's it's fun, man. That was, was a good. It's a good, it's a good show. Good, good fans. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm I'm kind of really tired. <laughs> we're, we're we're gonna call it here, everybody. Because uh, yeah, we've been going on for quite some time. Well, we've I, been I, at I, this for like almost four hours now. I honestly have to go to the bathroom, so we need to. We, we're, let's, let's let's do let's, Daniel's let's, shout outs real quick, so we can get out of here. Up. Let's wrap this up because it's You're been a good up. one. Bro. We will see you guys next week. All right, thank you guys for joining. Uh, appreciate you all. Um, I coming up for me. I'm still streaming uh, Alien Isolation. Uh, we'll be wrapping that right up, hopefully within the next week. Um, other than that, I kind of want to do more Phasmophobia streams, and I need to. I gotta. Josh and I need to do at some point a uh, Ghost of Tsushima Legends stream. And a couple other things here and there, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just you know ex- excited to to get through that, and you know we're 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 in the spookiest time of the month, so it's uh, you know fun fun times, uh, fun. Looking forward to watching more movies and whatnot, and and yeah, man, just uh, good stuff. So we'll see you guys tomorrow, hopefully for D and D. If you're watching live, if you're not, if you're watching on uh, you know, or if you're watching or listening on the replay. Uh, you know, come come join us on uh, 
on the frozen decimation stuff because uh, that's that's a lot of fun too. But uh, that's gonna be it for me, guys. So thank you all, and I'll see you guys next week. Peace out. All right, guys. I'm gonna be short and sweet. D and D tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern time here on twitchtv slash josh 902 Make sure to check that out. Uh, keep an eye on the Twitter for uh, for when Daniel and I will do those uh, those uh, those Ghost of Tsushima streams. And just keep an eye on the channel and Twitter just in general. And uh, let us know if you like The Boys Season 2. And that's going to do it all here for us today. Love you guys. Thank you for supporting the show. And we will see you all next time. Bye-bye.